to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. We'll slide down in big hills, you know what I mean, on the big, nice, burgundy snowboard. Okay, here we go again. Another beautiful day here in the booth, which is presented by Pub Beer and Liquid Death. Now, first things first, Stony Buds, how are we doing? So good, my dog. Love that. Now, to my left, we have Spencer Schubert, who, like in the intro to uh, the bomb hole, the, uh, the intro theme song as he was playing, he was kind of likening it to, to Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. It's like right when you're going to go up in the tube, you know, to the Thunderdome or whatever it's called. Right before you're going to die, you just like hear some cool theme music and you're like, oh, this is chill. No, this is great. I'm going to have fun. Go for the sword. Yeah, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time today. Actually, I, I know that you, you have some skill sets doing like pretend uh, pretend bong action. I oh, you, maybe want, you fi- want that? Fire okay. that up. Fire I just, up. I've done we this definitely want with like that. karaoke, but okay. I can try. The microphone, you know. I was a real cop. I I hate weed too. Yeah, is the yeah, best part. Going next oh day. yeah, yeah. Ah, I don't have one of those. I I can't do weed at all. It is like the scariest thing to me ever. Um, I think Tanner Pendleton coined this term, the uh, puff puff paranoia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. So mm-hmm. I just uh, pretend all the time. Whenever I drink stuff and I'm by myself, I just make sure I still got it. <laughs> you got to practice yeah, to yeah, fit yeah. in. For That's awesome. Year. Well, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Spencer Schubert, he's uh, filmed. Many of the heaviest street snowboard video parts of our time. I mean, we're talking visitors, 2032, forward, ender, keep the change, pulp, lick the cat, good sport, ammo. He's got a real snow segment. It just, the list goes on forever. So um, we're going to get into all that stuff and all your accolades and whatnot. But first, we got to start off with the fact that you grew up in Bend and you're kind of a crunchy granola eater at heart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, funny thing. I grew up in Bend. Like, you know, you come out of the womb, like chalk on hands, right? <laughs> Cliff bar in the back pocket. Um, I actually can walk a slack line. That's like one of my traits being from Bend. Um, that's all I got from there. I do not feel like I'm from Bend. Mm-hmm. I do not really love the granola lifestyle. Um, I'm not that good at rock climbing. I know it sucks to say for my people back home. But <laughs> yeah, uh, I grew up there and my parents were ski bums. They met in Mammoth Mountain. So there's always been like that part of my life, like the snowboard stuff. And uh, it's just kind of always been a tradition of ours to go snowboarding. Like I remember on Christmas, we'd always, we'd always open presents the night before Christmas Eve so we could go ride powder on Christmas. And uh, I was like so young, maybe like six or eight or 12. I don't know how young, but there was a dude in there when we were getting our stuff on in the morning and it's just just us. And I was like, why aren't you? celebrating christmas he's like oh he's like a little kid that's cute i'm jewish and i was like oh mom can we be that too because i want to be here every day <laughs> i had no idea very cute amazing well perfect uh, segue we actually have a guest question from none other than debbie your mother here we go <laughs> hey bomb hole no this is spenny's mom I'm just wondering if there's going to be a little spinny at any time soon. And if so, are you going to keep the family tradition of taking them up to the ski area at four years old with a couple dollars for the cafeteria while you ride all day? Oh, yeah, that's what they would do because they liked going more than me when I was young. So they just like give me some money and be like, have fun. And I remember there was the game that I loved, uh, Arctic Thunder. It was like a snowmobile. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you win one you get to play the next one for free. Mm -hmm. So you start on easy and then you go to medium and then there's like hard and whatever. So I got so good at that game. My parents were just like, go ride. My brother would too. And they're like this little idiot. And I would just run around the lodge, like would eat like saltines. I remember like finding ways to like eat in there. Like I would ask for a piece of bread, but they couldn't ring it up. So I would do that. And they have like free jam. And there was even like, like decorative pasta in there. And I would like take it, (laughs) pop the lid off grab some, put it in the free hot water, put ketchup in there and like eat for free when I was a young kid. I just gave you enough money to actually like buy a real lunch. I used it all on On Arctic Arctic. Thunder. Yeah, I couldn't, I didn't. It's like a gambling problem. Exactly. Exactly. Raised by the ski lodge. Pretty much because I grew up a bachelor and it's terrible weather. So when you're a kid, you're like, "Uh uh-uh, no way. I'm not going out in that. So. But parents were out there. Parents were out there ripping. They loved it. 
They loved it more than me. And then also the thing that's cool is his formative years. If you look at, you know, we'll, ju- we'll jump forward a little bit, but, you know, you're that first video part that you filmed where you're a little bobblehead kid. Yeah. Uh, he's doing fucking double corks. He's doing back radio sevens, cab nines, hit 50-50 in gigantic kinks. You did a back three tail press on a handrail. All these incredible moves. And how old are you in that part? I think I was 16. But I grew. That was the problem is I, I could jump and then I grew. And then, oh, it was, okay. and then it was all gone. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, the, the balance just left me. You can still jump, Doug. Don't even, don't even go there. I'm, I'm getting better at my, my height it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. learning how to use it. So when you look at most people that come from Bend, you, you look up to, you know, you got like Austin Smith, Curtis Cizik, guys like that that took a little bit of a different uh, route. It's kind of unconventional for to be a jib kid from, from – that's a shitty term, jib kid, but to be – I'll take it. I'll take a, jib a kid. A kid I'll that take it. hits rails more than jumps being from Bend, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I think what happened was I, – I mean, snowboarding was always there for me. It was like growing up and doing all that. And then in, like, high school, I just kind of didn't really care for it. I just wanted to be, like, a high schooler, just a kid, go out with your friends, do whatever, like, be a shithead. And then I met this kid, Cameron Fair, who who went to my high school. He was a filmer. He filmed skiing and some snowboarding. And then I kind of saw, like, an opportunity to actually go and be a snowboarder and snowboard every day. And so that's when I really was like, oh, I should do this. I should try. And the... You saw like the formula from those guys, like Austin and Brian is in there too, and video parts. Like you, like you could do this if you want to snowboard every day for your like every day and be a snowboarder. You just follow this route. But at the time, Cameron and like everyone else that was my age is more like hitting rails. So it wasn't that I wanted to just hit rails. It was like my, it was my way to be a snowboarder, to snowboard every day, to not go to college, to pursue this lifestyle. Was like that that outlet was to hitting rails and it was way more natural for me. So I was like, it's not that I wanted just to do that. It's just where I ended up. But your I also, your drive was like <laughs> fucked up from a young age. I feel like you've always had like insane drive to film video parts since you were 16. I think it was just the only thing. And I would like learn how to do stuff while doing that. Like I kind of regret filming at such a young age because I didn't even learn how to do some stuff. Right? You're just yeah. like, I got a couple things, I'll just beat them to death. And then I got a little older and I was like, I need to like train and like where no one can watch me because I can't even like switch front board. I don't want anyone to know that. Well, you should explain that because that is a really good point. Like I, my advice to kids coming up, I would almost say like, don't film until you get really, really fucking good and then film. As opposed to like, I started filming really early too, and it stunts your progression. You should explain. You don't want to skip why. steps. Yeah, but it depends on like where you're at. Like uh, Tommy Gesme is a perfect example. He's so incredibly good and didn't start filming like really until later in his career, or I guess that started his career, but was so immensely good. I think for me, I kind of needed that uh, filming at a young age to like get into it and like take all that time and have the connections. And then, like, really prove that that's what I wanted to do. Because if it wasn't for that at a young age, maybe I'd be doing something. Maybe I would have actually graduated high school or Mm -hmm. started something else. But because of that, I just went, I dove right in. I was like, I want to snowboard every day. I want to be a snowboarder. This is what I'm going to do to be that. So you mentioned high school dropout. How did did that happen? Uh, I actually got kicked out, which is way cooler. Um, It was on my birthday. Super cool birthday present. Actually, I'm not. I'm not being sarcastic. It was like the best <laughs> birthday present of all time. I was filming because um, my birthday is in January, January 25th, and we went out the night before and hit a night spot. And I got to school and I was tired, so my pro tip was to go to the library and fall asleep on the couch. So I'd just be at school, and so one of my friends woke me up. They're like, "Hey, your parents are here. Like, you have to go to the principal's office." I was like, "What? Uh, okay." I go in there, and they're like, "Hey, Spencer." So we really like you, but um, you got to go. And I was like, go? And they're, yeah, you, you, you can't go here anymore. And I was like, hell yeah, that's so dope. Thanks so much. <laughs> what do you, I'm out? Like, okay. I'm done? Yeah, thank you. Um, but I look back now, it's kind of bullshit because uh, I got kicked out because of, like, attendance levels. I think you guys have talked about this with, like, Sam and Blake and stuff. Like, if you don't go enough, that's how they get their funding. Like, uh, whatever. It's like... I think it's attendance levels and test scores and a couple other things. And so I was just like bringing it down, bringing the stats down. So I think my grades were all right, like maybe failing a few things, but I could have done it. Um, and then they're just like, you got to go. 
because I was spending all my time snowboarding. Which, But what I'm getting at is lame is that I know kids that were like ski racers and stuff, and they're in actual programs that are like uh, respected and do this so that you can go be a ski racer. And none of the kids that I knew that were allowed to skip school are still ski racers. But there's a lot of kids who do other things that aren't like an official program Mm -hmm. that don't get respected that are still doing them to this day. Mm -hmm. And making a living doing it. Yeah, and I don't want that to be like a sob story about me not graduating high school. I could have, if I would have known or tried harder or like, gone before and be like this is what I want to do I need to take time off it just kind of like was sprung sprung on me and I just like kind of just took that route and wasn't going to school to film it wasn't like I could have done it for sure it was my bad too but what's Debbie saying when you get booted out of school they were bummed they were for sure bummed but I was like you you guys dragged me to the mountain every day what do you think I want to do (laughs) go to school they set you up (laughs) yeah we like drove around in a motorhome and like Went back to like to Mammoth where they had met. That's where my brother was born too, Carson. Let's give it. Can we get a super air horn to Carson? Yeah, and give also the, the whole fam. Let's give the Debbie, Carson, your dad, Bo- Boozy. Yeah. That's that's Mike. His name Boozy. What about um? Hey, what about uh? Fuck your dog, R.I.P. What am I Poncho. R. I. P. Poncho. Poncho yeah, gets Poncho. part of that super air horn. Yeah, Poncho's I was great. Talking to Jonah Owen. Oh who no you way! Up with early in. Uh, he was kind of pro snowboarder. You kind of linked up with him. He was he was the he was a huge inspiration. Um, he like, said that your mom actually took him aside and ch- had him have a talk with you about hopefully staying in school. And really? there was just no. Uh, it was obvious your mind was made up. You knew what you. Were Maybe doing. he said that, and then we just went snowboarding instead. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but he just knew that you were focused. You weren't going to do it. But he asked me to bring up the Ben Super Kink. Oh, okay. So Jonah was a huge inspiration of mine as well as uh, Tech Nine as a whole. Like there was that like people group, like the Austin and Brian and Curtis. Uh, but at the time, being like a high schooler listening to rap music, I wanted to wear the big clothes. I liked the Tech Nine. I was all about that. I was like, this is this is cool. Mm-hmm. And Jonah, I had met since I was like a kid, and he was doing the jib stuff too. So I think that I didn't maybe didn't mention it before was like. Like, I could see it, right? You could see someone doing it, and you're like, oh, then I can follow in those footsteps. And that was Jonah for sure. Um, and we were filming together with that kid, Cameron Fair, and we went to the Bend Super Kink. Yeah, it's this big, it's in the end of ammo. It's this big, like, green, really long, kinky Oh, bunch my of God. Stuff. Yeah. It's a back 50 for you? Back 50. Yep. And so it was, like, raining mm-hmm. out. And uh, I think that we had just, like, that was my first spot I'd ever hit in my life, first street spot. We, like, rode down the stairs and hit the last down. I think with Jonah when I was like 12 or something. Um, and then like always looking at it, that was at my middle school. You like walk down those stairs all the time. And so then I think Ben had snow. And at the time, those weren't cool. Those big kinky rails, like long 50s, they were called like skier kinks or mm-hmm. whatever. But that was like the one spot we had. So we're like, let's go hit this thing up. And yeah, I remember like battling so many things. And that one was actually pretty quick. But when you're on that, I, maybe you guys know about this. Do you blink when you're snowboarding, like well, in street spots? I have never noticed or yeah. not noticed. Like if you're on like a like the Sexton hundred foot rail, wherever it is, do you blink or are you just like? I don't know if you could go on bloodshot. I don't know. What do you think? I I came out of that rail, and you can watch the clip. I am blinking really fast, and it looks like I'm crying, like maybe because I'm happy or something. But I'm just like. And so my, <laughs> my theory is that, is that you, is that when you're, you're so focused, you're just going open eyes. Like you're, what did the tunnel vision? And then as soon as you complete something, you're like, ah, come on, blink, 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 blink. <laughs> you old blink 182 scenario. Or you're crying because you got to the end. It's either mm-hmm. or you're happy. Yeah, he said when you guys rolled up to that, they were like, yeah, this is going to be like a 10 hour session. And you just laced it within like a couple tries. I think it was 12. 12 I think, tries. I think it was 12. And he was in the car. Uh, he like walked up there. He's like, I got time in the world. Like, go set up the lawn chair. And then I just like he remember saying he was like, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. He's like, no. <laughs> and then <died. laughs> But I've been to that. I've been back there. So Joe with his hundred foot rail, he went there six times. That's nothing. I've been back there eight times, maybe nine, multiple different 40? years trying to boardy it. Wow, come close. I've gotten really close. The last time it was the like the first thing. One of the first things we tried to film for uh, Good Sport, we went and we did three days in a row, and uh, it just it was there's a couple of close calls, but ne- never got it. That's a brings, hell it brings ride. a tear to my eye. Hell one ride. one time okay. too, I okay, got boy. I got focused. Uh, 
like I caught on the last second to last flat and like fell to my leg and hit my leg on the, the next flat. And I was in so much pain. We were filming for the snowboarder movie at the time. John Ray was there and he took me back to my dad's house and I called both my mom and my dad because I was in so much pain. I was like, I need, I need some sort of help. Like I know it wasn't broken, but I was hurting. So I called both of them. They both show up at the same time and they're separated now, but they're cool. But it was really funny to hear them bicker because I'm in the bed just like, ah, and they walk in. They're like, what do we do? My dad's like, I could give him like a bike and my mom's like, don't give him, I could get him Advil. And then he's like, Advil's not going to do anything. And so they're just bickering. <laughs> and I'm like, help, help. So dad won. I got, I got, I think I got like a pain pill and a shot of whiskey. He's like, you'll be all right, buddy. Oh, oh you'll be God. fine, son. <laughs> I'm going to close this door. See you in 12 hours. <laughs> Incredible. Well, let's let's th- get into the arc of your career because that first part, ammo, sounds like your first trick you ever filmed for that. <laughs> Back 50 was fucking your ender, which is incredible, a 32 video. And then pretty quickly you went into Keep the Change where you started. Is there anything I'm missing in between there? No, um, I think I, I had been talking to those guys. Uh, I think Colton reached out that year. Colton Feldman. Colton Feldman, for- yes. Colton Feldman reached out when they did get it together, and I don't think we had any clips. Um but yeah, those guys are already like any guys. We're gonna we're gonna do more of those. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Colton, that was <laughs> um, a delayed air horn for Colton there. No, I think we'll we'll talk more. But any when you were growing up, there was like it wasn't Instagram at this time. You knew everyone through like these am videos or yo beat and funny things. So there was like you'd know these people, and we were all like already in a in a gang together because you're like trying to come up in snowboarding, and and you see people that you like so. Uh, after that, I got into it. I don't even remember. It was like Rob and Colton. I don't remember exactly how it went, Rob but that Balding. was Rob Balding yep. and Colton Feldman. And we started filming for Holy Smokes, mm-hmm. which was also Harry Hagen and Skylar Brent, obviously. And John Ray was there for that year as well. And yeah, and then we just got into it. I don't know. It's kind of kind of fuzzy how it all happened, but there's so many people, and I give everything to keep the change. Like, that was so big back in the day and like gave an incredible opportunity and those like the caliber of those videos are unreal if looking back and like it's cool to see that these guys like made it happen gave an opportunity and want to do a video just for am kids and already all friends and then you see you still see so many names coming out of those movies right Mm -hmm. it's like sam taxwood mike rav johnny o'connor blake paul uh mark wilson there's uh, who else? Derek right? Lever. Derek Lever. <laughs> <laughs> I like live with Derek. So I do. Uh, Tommy oh Gesme. Do we say Tom, Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, of course. There and there's a whole gang. I mean, there's also like Chip and mm-hmm. and Justin Kennison. And Brady. Um, Johnny Brady. Johnny Brady, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, Parker Duke was in there too. Mm-hmm. There's like so many, so many names and so many people still ripping from that time in that era. Yeah, the thing that's cool from my perspective is we were kind of at this point. I was probably a video grass crew which is essentially just an older version of keep the change. Really? You know, we're just a little bit older, but I always loved how the trick selection, the spot selection, the videos like this, everything was, was tasteful. And you know, is that it? Does that come from Colton or is that from the whole crew? You know, he seems like he steers the ship a little bit. I don't know what it was, but you you take all these guys and they all kind of had been doing it and were with it and like, I think they just studied it. They're what you call a student of the game. Student of the game. Yeah. yeah. They weren't just going to go out and just like hit stuff. Everything was methodical. Like people knew what they wanted to do, knew what they wanted to try to show and also try to be on the same caliber as the VG guys or whoever else. Like, like we're not just like filming an AM video We're AM's filming a snowboard video. Mm-hmm. And for sure, all of those guys, like those guys are in, like the best filmers and editors. Um, and so I think it was like a culmination. Uh, definitely Colton, though, being like uh, the term, I don't even know, uh, the the godfather of amateur snowboarding. <laughs> 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 I don't know how that one goes. That was, it's an older one. But, yeah, dude, seriously, like to put this up and put all these kids up and, and, and to see where we're still at now and still doing it um, is fucking awesome. So, like, I give, like, Everything I owe everything to those guys and to those videos for sure. You know what's really cool when you think about the, um, the, you guys sharpening your teeth with Keep the Change. If you watch the tricks, it's been cool to watch yourself and Tommy and, and everybody in those videos for that matter, like refine their tricks. If you look 
and you you look at the early days, like it's a lot of like very difficult rail tricks that are I don't want to say rail jammy, but maybe like no, they like we're hitting deathly spots too. Like true. Johnny O'Connor, oh my god. Some of the most beast things ever. There's a clip of him trying to go over the fence to the oh like 60 stair rail, and he's yeah. like scorpioning down the stairs. Yep. Imagine if someone did that. Even nowadays, people would lose their minds still. Mm-hmm. He did a gap switchback three, the end of a uh, roll call. Mm-hmm. Who is doing gap switchback threes mm-hmm. on a kink rails? Like Hardway cab three gap. Hardway cab three. There was a cab three switchback one. There was like. <laughs> the list goes on. the The caliber in those videos is unbelievable. Like it's, mm-hmm. uh, but what you're saying is so true. I think at the time you're like hungry, you want to go all in. You see like a a narrow set. You're not thinking about like what could happen. You're like let's let's go for it. Let's let's put our life on the line because you don't really know. Nowadays, for sure, I think you can see as like I can just speak for Tommy and myself. Um, getting older, you're like. What is the risk to reward mm-hmm. and how do I want to do this? And how do I want to like hit something while still, still showing what kind of snowboarding I want to portray, but not trying to get hurt or do anything dangerous. Like it's, yeah, it's gotten a lot more refined for sure. It, when you're young, you're invincible in true. your mind, you know, you have no idea and you're just ready for anything and you can see it with the younger crews. It was crazy. Do you remember the first time you guys got like sore? Like, I remember that that was like, I'd heard that. Like when you're 18, you're like sore. Yeah, I've heard people say that, and now and then you turn like 21, you're like, ah, oh, I'm sore. Like it starts coming, and now I'm just always sore. You just wake <laughs> up sore. <laughs> but that wasn't a thing like that. It, I'd heard the word, but not known what that had felt like. Maybe like um, like sex too. When I was 18, I'd heard about it, but just <laughs> never, never experienced what that was like. So not until you were uh, 28 or something. Yeah. <laughs> I turned, tr- yeah, yeah. I want to turn 29 20. next year, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I like how you still have the keep the change sticker on your board, too. Still, oh, of still course, repping it. Yeah, I think I got lucky with that. There was a, found that, or maybe Tommy had it. Um, it's an old relic right there. Is what that is. Yeah, it just happens to be on this board right now. I don't think there's too many in rotation, but I think my mom did make those. Oh, yeah, I remember she used to make stickers. Yeah, but going back to, I'm going to go back into trick nerd shit because I love talking about tricks. I do too. So going back, the thing I like, if you look at your early days, let's let's just take a, a standard, a trick that was incredible. You go back 350-50 on the Harding kink. Fucking probably doesn't get the credit. It deserves how psycho that is. And also, I, I wish it wasn't filmed fisheye because I think the, like a long from the side would no, have been we, better. No, we had two long lenses. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'd, there's like a long story behind that one, but the the two long lens got lost. And then just recently, one of them, uh, one of them, like I was always asking Canute because it was like a nitro trip that day. Um, found one, and then like a year later, found the other. So we just didn't have these two, like the Raiders of the Lost Ark, just like hiding out somewhere <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's like a hard drive on a thing, and you have to like take it, replace it with something else. <laughs> Running out, ah, three six eight. <laughs> so let's talk about that back three fifty. Well, I actually owe it all to nitro. Um, ride snowboards though, ride snowboards. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam Taxwood was there and they had a plan to go hit that thing. And I asked if I could go tag along and he's like, yeah, for sure. And so I remember saying like, I'll get there before you, like I'll, I'll set it all up, blah, blah, blah. And then I was, uh, I was staying at a house with a uh, Z curl, Jared Jordan, and he had to like go do some stuff and whatever. And we did some stuff, ended up showing up and it's just set up and they're hitting it. And I was like, can I still, can I still tag along? And they're like, yeah, for sure. And I had a flight later that day. So I was like, okay, I really want to try this. I might just get right into it. And Time out, just to run it back. Were you thinking back three? Oh, yeah. Before, before like, yeah, before. I'm going to go there yeah. and back three yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. hog. Because that Got thing, it. it's, it's such a classic spot. Like, Marvin did a cab two on it way back. Like, I mean, Forrest has done it. Like, he did, like, 50 back 350. It's been back one on two. At that time, it's like a classic. It's like your Hollywood high. Like, go there. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows what it is. Put up a move. Shout outs to Cooper for his line. Sorry, I'm burping. <laughs> That shit is unbelievable. But, yeah, I went there, and uh, I had been doing a bunch of back threes. I think that was kind of my thing for a little bit. I just beat to death, like we were saying. I didn't have time to learn other tricks, so I just used the one I had. But went to do that, and, we had yeah, we would filmed it, and 
I got it and I was like, looked at my phone and I had to leave for the airport. So everyone, like, I remember Sam like runs down. I think I got it in like a few tries, which was crazy. And Sam runs down, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like hyping me up. And I was like, yeah, thanks so much. But like, can I go? Like, I got to get out of here. I'm trying to get on a flight back to Salt Lake. And I, I just started hanging out with this girl. So obviously, like, super girl motivated. I was like, I got to get back. It's St. Patty's Day. We're going to go out. This is going to be great. Sorry, guys, but you can fuck off. I'm going to the airport. And Cody Cody Beersdorf gave me a ride, and it was, like, the best, like, two hours of my entire life. Like, show up. They have it set up. They let me hit it, and then I kind of sneak out of there. So big shout-outs to all those guys for letting me tap into that. Um, and then just bail because that is like extremely rude. They were cool with it. Oh, super cool with it. Um, but yeah, about the tricks, like I love talking about tricks too. Uh, it's like something that you do with your, like your close snowboard friends when you're like in a room with like, you know, it's like soundproof. No one else is going to be listening to you. And you're like, can we actually like dive into this? Do you want to do this? Like when you see some of your friends after a video comes out, you start diving into the nitty gritty because that's who we are. Of course. Like we, we're going to go deep analyst. Oh yeah, like students of the game, and then you got to talk with your other your other students or your other professors or however mm-hmm. you want to look at it, and like you just get right into it. So I love doing that. I love talking about all that little like the nuances of it. Like if you even want to go back then, like three sixties were cool. Maybe not so much now, but like the things that were cool were like one eighty fifty variations of three sixties out. Right, like it was almost like what kind of like you do. You just do anything into 50 and then you do something out of it, which now isn't like the, the trend. Everything is like sideways, simple stuff, whatever. You will not catch anyone doing a half cap on front three out. And if you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. I'm sorry. It's, you're not doing the right thing. The trick snobs are going to come at <laughs> the you. The trick snobs. It's a real <laughs> thing. Those tricks just don't look as good to the layman, I think. You know, the sideways well, It's just looks great. It's Photos well. True. That's a good shoots point. Shoots well. Yeah, and style I, shines. It's, it's yeah, it's like refining your craft, figuring out you can. It, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And a prime example of that, you know, you you do a line of visitors where you do a tap, and then you do a back two on a long rail, and then a quick wall ride on the fence. And you you could have gone either way with the back two. You could have gone back two to fakie, you know, or you could have gone to regular. But you just let it go naturally to regular. Like a younger version of you, I feel like might have done like back three tail press front one or something you know like get all but yeah, but it's like, like ah you know i'm but, trying to show my i'm trying to make a name for myself like ah what can i do <laughs> yeah well it, and, and I, I get that too for sure like yeah. you're trying to come up you're like what can i do like oh my god imagine if i got like a paycheck like how, how cool would I that stand be out? i will die for this i think that's actually a quote from mamut Dur- I, Durant. yeah I, Durant, I d- yeah i think i Mamute think says that i there's a rumor don't quote me on it but yeah i think so which is so dope <laughs> <laughs> that is dope you're like yeah i don't care about my life let's go yeah and then running bungee back <laughs> Also, like running, running back to some. Let's get into some more other trick do- snob shit too, because I know, you know. Let's just talk about even natural speed versus winches. You know. Okay. Yeah, I think that. I mean, that will like, tie into like good sport as well. Um, yeah, you see this now. I think. I think there's a lot of people that are, like have been wanting to do that, have been doing. It. You see, like Lewif and, and a handful of other people, especially like like Colton and Tommy and those guys have been about that for a while as well. Um, I think like Ted, Ted as well too. Uh, but it's just actual snowboarding is what it comes down to. And there's cool. It's cool that there's been different eras with it. Like, and I'm glad that there was like the crazy winch hit the biggest thing that you can, so that we can move beyond that. You know, it's just like there was like the giant clothes with like layered tall tees, so that we could get beyond that, and we can actually just wear something and then go to Whole Foods afterwards and not look super <laughs> sketchy. It'll yeah. all cycle back. Okay, good. I cannot wait. I yeah. I, what is that store called? Um, Gen X. Gen oh, X. Gen I X. need to get back to Gen X. Yeah. People would come into town and go straight to Gen X. Mm-hmm. Get that new kit. And then what do you do? And then you change out of it in your normal clothes, and you just have like this like outfit, like your <laughs> your costume. They just wore like, those. I think all that's the time. what's nice now is that like you can wear like. Within, like, street snowboarding, even going up to the hill, like, you can kind of just wear the same things. Like, this is a layer, this is a jacket, this is this, and then I take it off and I put on just not waterproof pants, and now I'm just the same person, not like, all right, so 
take out my jammies. What do I want to wear today? What is it? The, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the don't be a medicine South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. It's like what is it? It's like the the slippers with the with the Uzi or. <laughs> <laughs> So but the, that reminds me, like, straight up, if you ever been to uh, a street spot in, like, the early 2000s with a Tech 9 crew, like, you'd be with Buds, it's an absolute problem. Like, the, you look at Buds has got a Tech 9 jacket on, a sky-high resi, sky the thing's high. down to his knees. Like, if you're just a look at this group of people, you're like, these guys are up to no good. Like these, these we guys didn't are, get messed with by, are by citizens much because we were probably they were probably scared of us. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> they weren't calling. Yeah. They weren't caught, caught running up to us, telling us to clean up. You know, what Cole I mean? Taylor's like, "You got this, Dilly Bob. You got this." And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, these two guys, Jonah and Dylan, they're both from Oregon. <laughs> yeah. Once Eugene and Hood River, yeah. like." <laughs> Dads are a hippie, you know, like, yeah, yeah, wear that. That's for sure cool. <laughs> it was a good look, though. Good would, look. But it now, yeah, yeah, you've gone through these trends of things, and then you're kind of moving beyond that, and then, like, the bungee thing was there. And the bungee thing was cool because you got to just, like, access to hit a bunch of new stuff. And then as you, and, like, I think they were, like, sponsoring videos, too, so you'd try to show those. Like, you try to show those cats. <laughs> yeah, they were all filming the lifestyles. Which is so dope. <laughs> I, like, I, I got to bring it up. The, the Frank... Bungie tying video. Do you remember that? Oh that too? Yeah. <laughs> was so cool. And I don't want to laugh at someone because because they right have <laughs> because the, he was speaking in English and he speaks French. I don't speak two languages. I barely speak one. I've been fumbling my words this whole time. But that video is insane because they I think Hayden fell on He's like, do this whole thing, and you can speak like a little bit of English and it's going to be perfect. So he's like, yeah, he's like tying it. And I had it at one point like dial. He's like, uh, what's the fucking verb for that? What is the fucking verb for that? Take that rope, doing a, a two, two ply. I don't know how to say that. And then uh, <laughs> he's like, attach, attach to this here. And he's like, things about bungee. He's like, I really like, I'm doing like a, I'm doing like a Russian accent, but yeah, it was just so good. The, what's the fucking verb for that? And <laughs> well, the, it's in the bonus of like, in uh, I think it's its own thing. You can find it on the internet. <laughs> it lives on YouTube. <laughs> no, it wasn't attached. He says something that's so good. Uh, I can't, I don't even know what the verb for that is, <laughs> um, but yeah, those were so cool. And then. And then now you see I mean, see look it. how many spots the bunge opened up, right? Exactly, right? Flat cities, all of a sudden you could yeah, travel to. Yeah, super cool. Like, all that stuff is cool in its time. And nowadays, you're like, okay, we move beyond that. Like, we're just like maybe these guys have, like, the whole thing. The whole street snowboarding is refining as well. And I like that it looks like snowboarding. I like when it actually is cool. Like, you're riding into a hill, and then you hit something, and then mm. you ride away. Because... When was the last time you watched X Games and they're and they're towing into the jumps? They're riding down the hill like <laughs> AK. They're riding down I the hill. I think I saw a motorcycle tow someone into a street spot <laughs> just the other day. Right? That is uh, motorcycles and and like the bird scooters <laughs> are all day. Those, those are, are still, good. Those are still cool. <laughs> Dude, going back to what you're talking about, I remember Nicholas Mueller had uh, has like the intro to the Nike video. He's like the morning commute to the office, and it's like this powder run. It's like incredible. And I remember right when that came out, I was like pulling, it was like a wet, rainy day. I was in like a tennis court parking lot, <laughs> pulling like a strip of snow that's like, you know, a hundred feet long and one board width wide. <laughs> and I'm just like walking the winch rope back and I'm like, the morning commute way to the office. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden you just hold on the win winch. It's like, yeah, zing, shot out of a cannon. And you're like, all right, that's snowboarding. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. And the or winch six thing people too, to you got like a, a bunch of like, then you got like, it goes to like the Zoolander scene when like the, the winch breaks down and it's like the files are inside the computer. You're like, how do we fix this? I remember once there was like all of us, we're like taking stuff off. We're like air filter. I don't know. <laughs> and it was with I was with Jed and Ollie and Meyer and we like this, it stopped like pulling so we we're like oh the air filter is bad. So we took it out and at one point the thing starts shooting flames. <laughs> it was <laughs> like shooting flames out we're like oh maybe not this. Like no <laughs> no engines please. And like <laughs> Bungie, maybe have it in the back sometimes and like don't acknowledge it's there. Like, don't look at it. Don't <laughs> and don't film a lifey with it. <laughs> God, don't forbid. film a how to attach the bungee. 
Another thing I too, uh, we got to talk about is like going on street trips. A lot of people maybe aren't familiar with street snowboarding and, and bungees. What they are is basically a, a gigantic rubber band that's what like forty feet long or something. And twenty, twenty, yeah, or oh, you twenty, yeah. Or you could double up the twenties. The tens <laughs> are tens are don't give you much speed. The twenties what you want. And uh, you, normally I'd break, put it on a carry on bag. And I've like I remember going through the airport through like you know. You're basically putting it through security. You have like this slimy rubber, this slimy rubber band, <laughs> and then and airport it's not security. in its bag anymore. It's like just kind of like there's like a zip tie around it. And you're like, uh, I'll hand it to you. It looks like a snake. You're like, yeah, you want that? That thing is cool. I was in Estonia with the Tech Nine yeah. crew, and uh, Dylan they lost his baggage, and uh, he gets a call to our or wherever we're staying, and it's like, hey, there's a problem. You got to get to the airport. We have something we need to talk about. And he's thinking, I got a bag of weed. I'm fucked. He was going to take a ferry over to another country and escape and go home because he thought he had all this weed. Gets there. It's the bungee. <laughs> and they're just like, what is this? What are you bringing into our what, country? What is the verb for that? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They're just like, can you please explain what this is? And he was literally going to get on a boat and go to Norway or something and escape. Yeah. And they're like, what, what is this thing? Yeah. Like, Bungees. Well, I think this is actually a perfect time. <laughs> For the uh, spinning wheel of death. All right, buds, let's talk about liquid death. Let's talk about hydration and death to plastic. Absolutely, uh, buds and I. If you if you can't really see behind the desk here, but it is a <sighs> graveyard of murdered liquid deaths. We're up to our knees in empty liquid deaths yeah, right we just, now. We crush can on the regular. And if you want to pick up some liquid death, head to liquiddeath.com slash bombhole. Uh, I think you get some free koozies. I believe possibly free shipping is what's happening right now as well on these things and uh they support the show so you should support them with that being sped said with that being sped death to plastic sped sir <laughs> <laughs> now sped sir let's get into the uh liquid death spinning wheel of death welcome to the liquid death 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 spinning wheel of death <laughs> okay I'm good spin it all right, I, I can't good even spin. see what I'm going to get. Good huh? spin. We'll good read spin. it for you. Files are in the computer. Bungee pull. Bungee? Where's that guy? The bungee pull? <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to hook the bungee up outside, and no. we're, we're going to see who's a superior bungee puller. You or Chris? <laughs> <laughs> and no, but is involved. You love the foot race. Yeah, we love talking about. I, you've. You've played me before, played. You've you've we've ran against each other and you whooped my ass. It's really? unbelievable. Really? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of and fast people race, out there. You're so long, dude. You figure you'd you got be a long running stride. around like Splendor Man. Out I don't there. know how to work the stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I gotcha. can't yeah. You can just swim. It does not compute. So uh basically it was perfect time. We've been talking about the bungee. We'll get to demonstrate what a bungee pull is right now. And uh so person who pulls it the furthest wins. What do we do once we pull it? Do you just let I it go? You, you kinda do like you, you like run we'll, back with we're it. Gonna, we're gonna cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> we haven't we haven't got that far. Yeah. Not a lot of play. Let's let's hop out of the booth and we'll, go do this. We'll let you know. When okay. We go around, and this is what Frank said. He said two ply. So you have it two two sides like this, and you just go through once. Go again, and and it's good. On your mark. Bungee back! Get that. Go. Once you get farther back than me. Do it right hand. Oh my god. Oh my god. Woo! Is that a win? Buds, what happened out there? It was a bungee back scenario, and uh, Chris, Chris won. Yeah, not by much. Not though. by much. I think that once you have like the set line that I did, you knew to go after that. It would mm-hmm. be easier to go second. So um, you warmed I'm, up the bungee too. Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it wasn't. It wasn't you a stretched great it out a little for him. Yeah, 
You I, can have it, but like just barely. I needed a win. He needed a win. <laughs> good for my self esteem. Good for my self esteem. Well, now could be a good time to not change topics, but stay on uh, trick nerd shit because it's fun. <laughs> but uh, you you filmed how many video parts have you filmed? I think eleven. Yeah, that's solid. It's and impressive. It, that's more than a lot of people do in their whole career. Mm-hmm. Now, two questions. Main, main, the main question I'm going to ask, I'll just combine it into one, is like, how, is, how has your approach changed? I think um, early on, you want to like, you want to prove yourself and you're so hungry to do that. And I was so worried, and this was like a big issue of mine, was to like make it as a snowboarder. And so during that time, I think I've <clears throat> lost myself caring about that too much and caring about how many tricks you get and, and not taking the time to enjoy yourself because that's the whole reason you do it you don't like become a snowboarder and make no money to be stressed out uh, on these trips in these spots and of course that's going to happen but that's not the the goal the goal is to travel around and snowboard with your friends and make something that you're proud of or do something that you're proud of or just have fun with it so I think we've learned a lot about that like these last few years like really you know like taking your time, like going and getting a good breakfast every once in a while or whatever that is. And at the same time, the tricks. So it's like, I was so concerned about like how many, how hard were they, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, I just want to like find a few things I really like um, and do them to the best of my ability. So like picking out a few things that I think are sweet and trying to accomplish those versus like get a bunch of checks like a bunch of notches in your belt on this part of like what you did and how gnar it was or whatever Mm -hmm. well one thing i noticed with your blend of tricks i always enjoyed is you have your um you've always had like serious respectable a-grade clips on rails that's that's always there but then you do crafty stuff for example you would do like nose grab tail scrape across a across a like sidewalk and with a spark or a slack line between the the tail devil, the tail devil, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. the tail devil or the slack line or, um, things of that nature that are, that are outside the, the box of conformity. Um, where, where do you, where do you get the inspiration for, for those kind of spots? That's the bend organ talking right there. (laughs) (laughs) The slack line, you had to bring it home. Yeah. (laughs) There's like a couple of those, like just like the granola. I'm still figuring out how to bring chalk into the whole thing. (laughs) Like, do we chalk the rail if it's too slick? Mm-hmm. Slow it down. Like, the kinks are too many. You got to throw some chalk on there. We'll slow her down a little uh, bit. Yeah, I think that you were there for the first slack line. Yep. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think there's, like, a clip of us pulling, like, ah. That was, both of those things came just when we were, like, trying to have fun. Um, and what's the other one, the tail devil, I was hurt, and Tanner McCarty, shout outs, big shout outs to Tanner McCarty. Yeah. Um, I went to SIA because I was hurt, and he's like, I just got a tail devil. Like, I think they're here. And I was like, no way. Brought it home and had nothing really else to do but do that. And then the slack line, we're all at Rail Gardens, like the best place on earth. And we're like, oh, this could be fun. And those things just, like, happened. Same with the uh, the surfboard in the 2032. Oh, the surfboard, yep. I exactly. get some hate for that one. Like, these other two ones. Well, let's specifically talk about the surfboard clip. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's those other two, right? And then there's the surfboard. And that was, like, the same thing. We were having, like, a kind of like a down part of a trip like we were all pretty bummed didn't really know what to do and blah 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 and um we found this surfboard at a thrift store i think and it was made it was a big surfboard like the pens like it was like thick like it wasn't a real surfboard it was like hard plastic and the idea was just there like we go that classic spot like the spot you've hit a bunch in boston you Mm -hmm. did like the front three on wrapped Mm -hmm. it like the switchback two i don't know that that's small down rail yeah Mm -hmm. but classic and yeah, we just, I was like, let's put this surfboard on and let's have like, let's laugh a little bit. And it just, I think a lot of people saw it as like a big gimmick thing, but at the time it was like, and nowadays I would first, sh- I like look back and kind of like feel a little bit of a shame seeing that. Did like, you mount bindings on it? Yeah, we mounted bindings Dude, on it. Like front boarded and, and like try and to like back to, you know, yeah, it's not a gimmick. That's cool. Yeah. It was just fun. It was like a fun, it's like fun. little like reset in those times. And that's like what those were. It wasn't to like 
be like, oh, look at look at this new route I'm taking or something. It was like, let's it's just hilarious. Let's just yeah, throw this fun. in there, yeah. And also the fact that you fucking he tries a back two on this thing and his bindings rip out of the thing and he's literally like <laughs> just in his bindings. Yeah, but we use like I think we went to Home Depot and got like uh like decking screws. <laughs> and so when you look at the clip, you can see like like two and a half inch screws coming out of my bindings that are attached to my <laughs> my boots, which is so gnar. It looks like I could like really hurt someone like <laughs> extreme soccer cleats also another thing too it's like i, I imagine that you can't even fucking ride that thing and you manage to front board it and then no, we had to build a track it back. was <laughs> no we had to build like little walls so you could like ping pong in it was like nah, 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 nah. i think it was like 50 and then front board i was like back two <laughs> Because the the back three for a little bit really was, I just was used to turning that way. I was mm-hmm. like, okay, we got this. Buds, you got a Patreon question? I do. Uh, you know, we're talking about you got 11, 11 parts under your belt. Um, first of all, Patreon, thank you so much for your support. And just to let people know, because some people don't know what Patreon is. It's, yeah, it's, it's uh, a way to join our community. You get some great things from the bomb hole, some perks for joining up. You also get a chance to ask questions in our show ABU. And it uh, really helps us keep the lights on. So thank you so much to all the people involved. This first one's from a good friend, too, Alex Sherman. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh, God. Spencer, what is your training regimen in the off season? How do you maintain the body? Any tips you could recommend to the aspiring boarder or entrepreneur? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, that's, that's, that goes into the first thing that like when I, like, I don't say I'm a snowboarder. I say I'm an athlete. So training regimen is huge, obviously. Um, and everything else that goes into this, because it really doesn't matter. Like if you can come up with like a cool idea at a spot or like think of something or, or have a way that you want to represent how your snowboarding looks, as long as you can do like push ups and stuff, then you're a good snowboarder. So to that, (laughs) Alex, um, I don't, I don't do, I don't bench. I bench the bar. So my, my thing is, uh, is just, you know, eating a bunch of hot dogs, like as many as I can. (laughs) And, uh, and every once in a while try to actually go surfing, but not the big board, like the real one this time, you know, with your arms and and not back toing. So, so no regiment whatsoever. No, there's a regiment, but I'm not going to let my secret out. 12 ounce beer curls. No. I th- say like a sixteen ounce. Sixteen ounce. No, maybe no. a twenty. Yeah, actually a good All time right. for a guest question from uh, none other than Desiree Melanson. Here we go. Hey Chris, you're not asking for it, but I'm giving it to you. I heard Spencer's on the bomb hole tomorrow. So, question for Spencer from me, Desiree. Tell everybody our favorite story to tell everybody about. Oh the time no! I used my ID to get into the bar. Love you so much. Love the bomb hole. Hope you run this, Chris. Okay, bye. I like how she just sent you a question without yeah. you asking. I think my unsolicited. <laughs> I think my, unsolicited question. I think my I mom did that as well. Here's a question. <laughs> run it. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. You know what? Um, huge shouts to Desiree for bringing that up. I think this was a this was actually a big moment in my career as making a name for myself. We were at the WCI uh, back when they, we used to have like contests and snowboarding, and there was like still money involved and. I wanted to go out afterwards. In Mammoth, for the record. Yeah, in Mammoth, Mammoth. in like downtown, that little zone or whatever. And uh, I wanted to go out with everyone afterwards. And so just that that summer before, Desiree was digging, and I was a digderite, and she had shaved her head. So as her hair grew out, when she took her um, the season pass photo, we had like the exact same hair and I was like 17 and we looked identical <laughs> at this point in time, like spitting image. It was kind of crazy. So I used her pass for like the rest of the season after she was done digging, like I was in bend. And so I would just like go and board a few more days. And so we had always joked about it. And then when it came town, ta- came time to actually get into the bar, I used her ID and wore her clothes and was Desiree to get into the bar at 18 and she wore my clothes, which is pretty much the same thing. Like, I remember, like, I wore her bra and stuffed it. And there wasn't, you know, we didn't stuff too much. But I, like, wore her thing. And then we went into the bathroom and swapped. And that's when I met Bridges and, like, made a name for myself. Because he's like, I'm going to remember you. You're the guy that used Desiree's ID to get into the bar. <laughs> and the next night, the next night, uh, we did it again. And uh, 
before we went and changed in the bathrooms and the bathrooms are outside of security at this bar. I don't know where it was in Mammoth. And so we just had to like go into a corner and like under a table, like swap clothes real quick and make it out. But yeah, that was a great time. Thanks for bringing that up, Des. And thanks for, uh, for putting me on the map with these snowboarder guys back in the day. So it worked. Yeah, twice. Flawless. Flawless. Victory. We still look alike, but at that time, I would say, like, identical. Identical. That's amazing. Okay, I have a question for you to change gears. Um, who is Lewif? And I'm not talking about the snowboarder Lewif, but who is Lewif? Okay, Lewif. This comes, this does relate back. This is Jibology. This is, like, top-tier Jibology. We're getting into Jibology. Yeah. Okay. We had Once, Jake on, well, Jake on last week. Can we talk Jibology? He was Jibology, yeah. Continue. There's there's a different, there's a few different, like, um... There's a few different paths of gibology. Dialects, would you say? Um, you know, the studies, 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 studies of gibology. Okay. It's just like doctors. You can mm-hmm. you can go into different fields or whatever. Yep. Um, so this one comes down to spots. We are going to Russia for good sport, and I didn't know what was really going to be like offered there. A lot of times you got to go to the hardware store, or, like be able to like mess with something or do whatever. So we had this backpack that had like every tool that you needed and like little things, sandpaper, like. JB Weld, maybe like a, a bolt cutter or something. Rubric. Rubric was in there. Um, and a few other tools. Stanley and Rubric. And Lewif is known as being a, a top tier a PhD in Jibology. Uh, and he's always been in Quebec messing with stuff, making it so that you can hit spots that you wouldn't otherwise be able to hit using some tools and whatever else. And so we brought this thing and we had it fully loaded up. So we just started calling it Lewif. So you were like, and then we would like just have so much fun with it. We'd be like, oh, did you grab Luif? Lu- is Luif in the car? Like, has anyone <laughs> seen Luif? We need Luif. Break out Luif. And then there was this smaller bag inside Luif that was like the screwdriver and like a, a couple other like small the things that you need. Kit, the thing. tuning kit. Yep. And that was called Thomas, which is his son. <laughs> 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 you go inside Lewif, which is kind of backwards. It doesn't yeah. really make any sense, but it'd be so good. You'd have the spot like, where's Lewif? Like, I need Thomas. Break out Thomas. <laughs> so that, that was great. And we went, there was, like, we found everything we needed. We just had Lewif for fun. And then Lewif carried over. We did the good sport for two years. So Lewif carried over. And every time you go somewhere, you need something. Lewif grows. He's growing. He's aging. He's becoming wiser, just like his snowboarding. And there's so much stuff <laughs> in Lewif. <laughs> random little goodies. Like it should be in a museum at this point. Well, if you ever if you ever decide to do away with, we can get a, like a glass yeah. case and give we can kind of home. like give it a proper home here at the bomb hole. We'll give Lewif like its own display case. Yeah, I I, I know, might need Lewif. I think, once yeah. you retire. Yeah, yeah once you yeah, retire. when you retire, the Lewif it'd be great. Okay, great. Th- saying that you guys are still going to be here at that point in time, or yeah, potentially, I, we'll see. I mean, yeah, it's hard to get hurt doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, another, thing or maybe too, bungee I, back. Who I, knows? Yeah, the, yeah, there could always be a bungee incident. Uh, we've seen that happen before. Going back to what we're talking about, a lot of our listeners maybe aren't familiar with the ins and outs of like particular street snowboarding. Like a lot of times, you think you see a guy do a two seventy onto a rail, and you're like, oh, I could do that. But what we don't realize is sometimes you got to fucking cut a fence out that's like in the way you got to like trim back some bushes maybe there's like uh you know there's all kinds of things you got to do maybe to, to to make a spot rideable it's to not take no for an answer and uh you know i was talking to to uh tommy and he's like you know he will do anything to to hit a spot and my question to you is uh how much vandalism is kosher to get a <laughs> snowboard shot? This 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 is just like how much harm you were willing to put your body through when mm-hmm. you were younger. When you were younger, you were like, there's a car in the way, let's just like bash it and like, get it out of the way. Uh nowadays, like I am so less down. Like tr- like tree branches and stuff, like if it's not too big of a deal, something's gonna grow back, whatever, like that kind of thing. But like a full fence. Is pretty brutal, um, especially if it's like a like a person's business or whatever, like a, a school sometimes. And you're gonna like clip a couple like the top of a chain or something like that, or like a chain link fence. That seems chill, but yeah, I'm having a much harder time with vandalism. I'm not a huge fan of it anymore. Yeah, I've seen decks get removed, right? Handrails removed that were in the way, and yeah, and then you, you get into the point of like at what. At what point are you are you building the spot? Because that's also yeah. super whack too. Like you're gonna bring something here. You're gonna, I don't know. It's like uh, it's like having the wood 
after like a skate spot, like a rail onto grass, mm. and there's and there's just a piece of wood. Like that's not kosher. Like there's so many funny intricacies, little things of like this unwritten rule of the streets. Take or it of, yeah. too far. The code of the streets, if the you code will. of the streets. Yeah, the code. Let's well, yeah, that street like street knowledge, well, give which us, goes give us into a couple, jib- jibology. Yeah, this of is jibology. jibology. This is a sub a sub genre, a coin termed by Harrison Gordon, I believe. Yep. Uh, one of the founders of Jibology. Now, I have a question. This is texted to me from Colton Feldman, and he said, ask about his love for icing and preparing <laughs> ledges. <laughs> this is a big one. Yeah, I sometimes go overboard. So let's say, like, Jake's Jibology is, like, spots and, and perfection and all this, and mine is, like, making it hittable in a certain way, like the the technicality, like the building of the lip, how much water do you need? Like, do you need to salt? It's like all about that. That uh, that's more of where I um, excel in in my jibology. Shine, yeah, shine. And so, ledges is a funny one. We were in Russia, and there's like all these dope ledges, but they're all beat up like crazy. And if you've seen like old clips from Alaska, like so the South Ledge, you remember that? It's like iconic spot. And there's another one. Um, where everyone like gaps too, like Gus Ingle did the gap front three. Mm-hmm. And if you see, it always looks like there's like vines coming down on the concrete and that's just water because they poured water on it. It's so cold up there that it's just like butter. It's it's icy. You can go sideways. So what we would do is like get get some water and then pour it on some snow. And if you have like gaps or holes, you could like get these things and I was calling it slush puppies where you like mix it up into like a little ball of wet snow and then you pack it in there and you let that freeze and then you can... You can form stuff to w- the way you want it so that you can slide over this thing. And so we're, like, getting all technical, wearing these, like, gloves so that these are, like, the, the, the ledge gloves so you can get in there and, like, fix little stuff or do whatever. And if you could see it in the video, we hit a bunch of shit that you would never be able to slide, but it mm-hmm. worked out just like fine. Like the back 180 Switch 5.0? Was that in it? That one was just water. That was water. Yeah, yeah, but, like, the one that, like, Tommy front boards... That thing was beat up. There's like rebar sticking out of that. And then there's like the one that Derek front boards um, it's in a line board slide and then front board fakie on the flat down. That thing was like missing a section. And the, just those little things are like I, if you want to like, I don't know, uh, like a rail or something like you, I'm sure you've taken a file to a rail mm-hmm. or any of those those little things that you just would never notice. I love that shit. I don't know why. Like making little it happen. water to snow ratio. Water you, to snow ratio. You form a slurry and you pack the it slur- in all smooth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and then you could take the board and then you like work the board into the slurry to make it smooth. It's almost like when shit. Chris is working with uh, the Crete, right? It's oh, like, I, yeah, like we're finishing. Concrete, yeah. Were, you a, were you a finisher or what was your... Uh, I'm actually horrible at doing concrete despite doing mud dogs. Uh, you'd have to ask Chip... Uh, yeah, Chips my, to finish. My, my finish work is. You're horrific. more of a slush dog than a mud dog, though. Yeah, I'm uh, more slush dog. mixing up the mud in the bucket kind of guy, you know. All right, let's go back to tricks. Let's go to trick talk. Tricks. Trick talk. All right, we got to go an- another one forward. Your first enter. First of all, as a as a video part guy, if we're gonna go into like nerd sync. For for me, I know that like Ender was the goal in the career. Like that was like life. If I get an Ender, I can fucking put the dirt over me. I'm gonna be all right. That. Uh, how was it when you got Ender for? forward your the kind of breakout part for snowboard mag it was really funny because that was so cool blake and i were both in that video and this was in the time i was talking about before where i think we were both in that mindset of like we got to prove our shit like we are gonna like put everything into this i remember we were both like any trip you could go on anytime you could be doing something you would do it to the best of your ability and we were stressed out like i think that we were like 2021 that year like super stressed out really trying hard and so when the video was over we we had been talking a lot Blake and I super good friends know that we like done pretty well and I was actually hoping that I was going to get the opener part I was thinking that Blake was going to get the last part and I was thinking of your opening part and get real and like how fucking I cherished that part until I met you but in, <laughs> in, <laughs> at the time it was like so cool. I was like, if I could have that moment like he did, that would be so cool. And then come to find out like roles reversed and Blake got the opening section and I got the last one. It was unbelievable. But I was at that premiere, San Clemente. Were you there? I was uh, there. Of course you were there. Um, we ate, uh, I think the place is called Bowl Taco. Oh, yeah. That place was. I got sick. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That place was so I w- it was super emotional. Awesome. Like I was standing next to my brother. I remember there, it was like tears and stuff. Like whatever. I'm like young. Super big moment for me, like felt awesome. And then all night I was puking and everyone's like, oh, dude, he's so fucked up. 
And I was like, no, I'm sick. I thought Why you were fucked up. Yeah, everyone <laughs> did. And then we had to get on the plane the next morning to go to Colorado for whatever that is. The what Red is Rocks? It? No, it was like the, the downtown. Oh, down. that little event. Yeah, yeah, whatever it was, bunch of premieres. And I was sick then too. And they're like, damn, he's hung over. And I was like, well, no one acknowledged that I'm sick. I do not feel well. I have not drinking. That is 12. Tw- I threw up 12 times. In the last hour. That is not being hung over. And I was like, oh, whatever, dude. And dude, <laughs> fuck you guys. That sucks. I still think he was sick or, <laughs> or hung over. Yeah, and right. Drunk. Yeah, right. So my, my ender, that ender, like huge ender. moment for me was just me behind the dumpster. Like, woo. <sighs> That's Puke. sick. Well, let's talk about the ender in the ender segment. The last clip. Through the tree to rail. Through the tree to rail. That's, uh, that's definitely on the fucking... Um, on the mantle as far as tricks, best clips of your career. Well, if we'll talk about, yeah, that like hard part with spots, um, Johnny O'Connor did that through the mm. trees to the other side and he went to the closer rail and then we got given that spot through Tommy J. Um, Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, Providence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then it was like that. And so then we went there and then we found out that, <coughs> that Skyler Brent, former associate, uh, Keep the change, of course, and Johnny O'Connor, absolute beast and homie. And we'd just been filming the last year before and keep the change. They had done that. So I'd asked, I'd asked Johnny if it was cool. And then he's like, nah, or he was like, yeah. And I think he was just being nice. And so he said it was cool. Um, so I got to call myself out for this to where like he was put on the, on the spot. And maybe that's something I shouldn't have done. It's like, Johnny on the spot action. Yeah, it's it's Johnny I, I, so maybe nice. I should. I, yeah, I, I should have realized that if you ask someone something and, and you just call them cold call them, that they might not be able to be like, I don't really think that that's that cool. Um, and I just took that and ran with it. But um, we squashed it, and I think that's that's cool. That's like comes goes back to that communication thing and whatever else. But you streets. went to the close rail, or yeah, he, he went, went to the close rail, and yeah. you went to the one all the way across. The I stairs, went so to it's kind of two different. Yeah, it's two different. That, I, that's what I wanted to do was like at least something different. But, but maybe we, you should have waited had, a year. We had went there and like the what the remnants kind of weren't there. We had just then we had heard about it, and so we had called and asked and, and whatever, and that's how it all panned out. Oh, there wasn't remnants, so you you weren't quite sure. We weren't quite what sure. Went we weren't quite sure we went down. Yeah, that gets tough. Okay, we're going to take a quick break to talk to you guys about pub beer. Now, I believe Spencer Schubert has a live report that's actually not live. It's pre-recorded from the Cobra Dogs dog stand. Just like the Bomb Hole Boys, we love cracking can and hot dogs. And what kind of beer we like? Pub beer. Cheap, fun beer. So go get yourself a beer and maybe a hot dog. Well, another thing we're we're blazing through right now, but I think we should talk about we've all these video parts, credible street video parts, and then you kind of you get the the audible for real snow, but you didn't get the the heads up early. You got it kind of late, and let's talk about your real snow experience. Okay, I love this. So, um, Mark Wilson got asked to do real snow the day before I did, and so what happened was that year. Uh, Tony Kirkle got hurt and they needed someone else. And so the, or what happened, they, he got hurt in the last year, he got hurt too. And so they told that story. And so when he got hurt this year, they're like, we kind of did that. We're looking to get someone else. And there was two weeks left. So they asked Mark, I think I even talked about it with him and he just wasn't into it. And I was like, yeah, for sure. That's like so unfair. Like you get two weeks and everyone else has been at it for like a month or a month or more. And you're like, men, they're like mentally prepared for it. And you're not going to, no, why would you do it? So then I get the call and I was riding Brighton and it was like a pow day. I remember it specifically. I'm on the chair. I like get this random call. I answer. I was like, hello. And they're like, hey, this is so-and-so with X Games. Like we have a really awesome opportunity and we want to talk to you about it. Do you have time to talk? And I was like, no, it's a pow day. Can I give you a call back <laughs> later? And they're like, what? Like, this is a really cool opportunity. I was like, yeah, I'll give you a call later. I know what you're going to ask. No, I'm good. And so we just kept riding pow. It was dope. And then uh, driving down. I was with Ben Billadu, and uh, it had started snowing in the city, and we love rail gardens, and I wanted to st- stop by and see how much it was snowing, and that's when the idea came about where he's like, or like both of us like, what if we did it here? And I didn't have a filmer, and Ben was kind of hurt. He was filming for 3 a.m. with Colton Feldman and Tommy mm. in Adidas, and uh, or it wasn't 3 a.m. Um, 
It was it was Blender. Blender. Yeah, yeah, he was filming for Blender. Sorry, and uh, he was like, "I'm hurt. I can't really go." He's like, "I'll film it." And I was like, "Well, we don't we don't have a camera. What are we gonna do?" And Justin Meyer lives next door to the rail garden. So I call him. I was like, do you have an extra camera? He's like, extra camera and a lens. Get in there, rip it up. And so we're like, sick. Because you still got the same amount of money, even though it was only two weeks. So at this point in time, How many we're biscuits like, is it? I think it was like 12, 12.5. And there was no travel needed? No. No camera. No, that was the whole idea, was to like take the money and run. Like, hell yeah. And so we called him, and it was Gunny. And we're like, um, it wasn't Gunny. It was, Sarah, it was Dogger. Sarah Cassidy. It was, do- oh, it was Dogger. It was Dogger. Okay, and uh, we're like, hey, is this cool? Like to do it at the Rail Gardens? And, and he, you know, he goes back so far and film guys there and everything else. And it has a special place in his heart. He's like, yeah, sick. So we started filming it. And like right away, I think you came out with us for a day. And we we're just trying to like knock off some tricks. And then as I started, I started caring more and then more. And then we went back and redid these tricks. And at that point, it had switched for me from like being like, oh, let's take the money and run to like, this is actually a pretty cool, cool thing. And for me now, looking back, I think it's like one of my favorite things I've done in my career now showing like you have this awesome platform to show people what street snowboarding is. And then a lot of people are going to take that and they want to win. So what is street snowboarding to the public eye? Jumping off a roof, winching in (laughs) into a wall because it's the highest wall mark. You're going to win. Right. And that's not a very cool way to to like show what snowboarding is. And then this thing turned into like, hey, I'm going to go to this park with my friend who has a camera and it's on a hill. And so what you do is you strap in and you ride down and you hit the features and you bring a shovel and maybe some water and some snacks. And you can like, you can go snowboarding. You could learn snowboarding there. I've learned tricks there. Like it's means so much. And so it turned into this thing where I was like, this is a way cooler way in my eyes to display what snowboarding is on this giant platform and show people that it, that it could be just that. Right. And at the same time I was trying to like, just do like follow cams and really technical tricks and do them to the best of my abilities and try to film them to the best that we could. So it did hold up to these other parts just in a different light. And still to this day, I think that's a, that's a huge thing that I, and I think that's a big thing why we try to just film natural speed spots and all this is that it is more relatable and that you can just go out and do it. Like cities get snow, right? Like New York got snow this year, a ton of snow. You're going to see a bunch of clips and all these videos of like people strapping in going down. And it's like funny because they're like, I don't know what I'm doing or whatever. And you're like, but that's all it is. And that's the first step. And that's like the closest thing to get these people into snowboarding. Do you think that that would be the same if it would be like on a flat parking lot, like, all right, you want to try snowboarding for the first time? Grab the end of this bungee. It'll be fun. No. And, and jump no. off this roof while yeah, you're at it. No, <laughs> like, you can go to these parks, and you can ride and, like, snowboard. And that's what, like, the – that's why, like, m- the Midwest is so important with these rope toes is that they usually start at, what, three, four when kids get out of school. And so they can go do something after school and go snowboard, and it's cheap, and it's relatable and accessible. And that's, like – something I've really been pushing towards lately and want people to do is the relatability. It's like the barrier to entry. We talk about all the time. What's the best thing for that? Helling an AK? Like, you know, being the biggest, baddest dude? No, I think it's like starting simple. And and that simple can be cool. That simple, you're going to see enders and videos that get a bunch of views and inspire a bunch of people that were filmed in where? Denver, New York. Massachusetts. uh, Right. And that's going to be something that's on this wall of like memorabilia. Some standout moment is might be a block away from your house growing up. Mm -hmm. So that's where that whole X Games thing started. And then it was like such a joke. And then some people even like called me out for it. They're like, oh, like this. And then at that point, I'm like, no, dude, I stand by this. I think this is cool. And um, I think it would have been judged a little bit better if it wasn't Dan Breezy, Pat Moore, and Pat Bridges <laughs> as my judges. I got Breezy the year before it was Lou Whiff. You give me Breezy? God. Breezy. You know, he has, Rail Garden's a special place in his heart, but I'm sure he was like thinking, well, nah, you gotta go. He's pick. like, I 450 to that rail. You just did Tarway yeah. uh, Front 2 or whatever. <laughs> And his mentality is the bigger, the better. And there's so many good, good no, takeaways. No, Breezy, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> there's so there's so many incredible takeaways from that, too, because you think yeah. about what you're just saying there, too. You know, there's people that talk shit on rail snowboarding 
it's easy to do that if you live at the base of locks or in mm-hmm. a mountain town that gets fucking 20 feet of snow. Like, fuck rails, man. I'm a mountain guy. Well, you grew up in Massachusetts, Minnesota, Quebec, fucking wherever. Like, you, there is no big mountain ride. There is no powder, right? So you, and for me, the thing that got me into snowboarding that made me fall, fall in love with it was, like, backyard snowboarding. Like, going to, oh, yeah. going to like, a, a, our local golf course. I'll never forget chucking a 540 on my, like, just fucking hands above the head. And you're like, dude, you're hooked, you know? And You um, haven't busted one of those cents, huh? <laughs> yeah, I used to go off the toes. Yeah, I got to bring Dude, that back. first time right. you hit a picnic table? Oh, I mean, yeah. That's incredible. That's, like, a monumental... Part and it's still fun and yeah. it's like still the best time um i even had uh a moment like this when i was in japan we were filming for like the lick the cat video and just so happened to be like curtis Cizik was in town he was with like ryan aguchi and we went out to dinner with them and i ended up sitting next to terrier and uh we'd like kind of bonded like we were like making jokes or whatever and i was like well this is terrier and then he started talking shit on rail snowboarding and I kind of talked about this, but at the same time, I don't think anyone really cared or was listening, or maybe I was a little drunk too. But so what I w- was going back to what I said earlier, like that was my path into snowboarding. And for so many people too, like if you're going to start and it, it's it's lame, then why? Like why cannot a bunch of people get their start into snowboarding this way or do that? So what? If it's lame, I should not be a rail snowboarder filming these videos so I don't have to have a nine to five. Like, because I love snowboarding. I want to do it every day. I can't be a rail snowboarder. I should work nine to five so I can go out and go to the mountain, ride the cool powder twice a week. No, I want to snowboard all the time. And if this is what gets me there, then for sure that's what you're going to do. And it's still dope. It's lame to talk down mm-hmm. on that. It's at the same time lame to talk down on any aspect of snowboarding. And it's all shredding. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. And that's did you fine. challenge Terje on it? I think I did. And then I think he just didn't even hear what I said. So <laughs> <laughs> totally fine there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like going back uh, to the rail gardens thing, the thing that happened, which is really cool there, you know, A, I, I do remember hearing some people bag on it. And I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots. Like doing the, a lot of the technical tricks that you did on those rails is so much fucking harder than blasting, like getting shot out of a cannon off a winch and doing a giant wall ride. What did that take? Three tries, you know? And yeah. And then also sidebar, I feel like you ended up getting this kind of like not expected training facility by, by filming this part. <laughs> you were like, I'm going to go out every day and I'm going to push myself and I'm going to try a new hard trick. And I'm going to film a line. And it's probably like the best thing for your snowboarding you could have possibly fucking done. That was the real training that uh, Alex was looking for earlier. <laughs> Wiz. <laughs> that's what I do in my off time is go to rail gardens. <laughs> yeah. um, that's true. And to what, to what you're saying, um, Go to the five line and hit those five rails. Those rails are really close together. It is hard to do. I've jumped off shit. It's way more fun jumping off stuff. Big ass landing. As long as you get there, you're going to be fine. It's kind of thrilling too. Five rails in a row trying five different tricks is a nightmare. And then someone's following you and you don't want to hit them. That is not fun ever. So, yeah, go uh, hit those we, things. We got to talk five line because I do know... Talking gibology. I don't know if you want to release any secrets. Oh yeah, this I is know just you, like the ledge I know, thing. I know yeah. you had a little People se- like secret. You had yeah, a full yeah. industry okay. secret okay. for gibology yeah. on the five line. So I did this. I did this again this year. Um, and just to my point, there are things where you can take it too far, and they can be whack. Building spots, doing things, cutting out rails. I think a lot of those can be pretty lame. I put dirt in between in between those two rails or like slow down yeah slow down just a little bit just a little sprinkle and then like every once in a while it'd be like too much dirt and you'd land and just flip but yeah you i was i was dirting it up to uh to go to go slower because i didn't want the speed check like i cared how it looked to go back to that like i wanted it to look a certain way i didn't want to have speed checks i wanted to be like a flowy line the whole video to be you know good tricks and and done well and, and look the right way and there's a line in good sport where it's three rails in a row and we were putting a little bit of dirt between those two. And big shout outs to Mark Wilson and Riley Nickerson and Tommy for helping me because that day was just brutal. And uh, it's the the type of snow where it packs, it becomes concrete. Mm. So then you were just flying into the next one. But if you like put fresh snow on it, then it was fine. And so these guys were as a straight workforce. It was every, like every it's go. like each guy is in between one rail and they have their section and they put new snow and and you got to just like love. Love your squad when they're down to, like, put the team on their back. 
And I think uh, dirting up the snow, there's nothing wrong with that. It's more just a little, a little secret, a little industry dirty secret. Well, that's a, that's a dirty uh, little secret. That, oh my god! Well, that's <laughs> that's a uh, definitely like something you get with experience. When you're 16, you're not going to know how do I fucking slow down in between mm-hmm. these rails. You throw like 30 speed checks and and uh, and whatnot. But uh, another question I got from Colton who texted me. He said, "What is you wanted to know what your favorite Tommy clip and your favorite Derek clip are from Good Sport?" Mm. That's really tough. Derek clip uh, has to be his board side on the crazy kinky rail. Um, it was just like, it's so classic Derek. Derek is like the board slide guy. Derek can board slide anything. If you look back in his career, he's board slid some of the craziest stuff. And it's always like the wild, kinky, funny things. Like, I don't know if he could board slide just like, if he was like a long down rail or like a big kink rail thing. But if it's like, if you got some weird kinks in there and some other stuff, that's Derek and he's doing it all day. And, uh, that one is just like, it was so, so classic to me. And it was such a dope clip. Um, for Tommy, this is, this is hard. Um, there for all of them, you know, and we put a lot of work in a lot of, a lot of those spots and tricks and timing and how it looked. I think maybe his, his ender, the, the front three was really cool. Cause we, we went to this place and it's like a castle and the in run was wild. Cause we had to like go around and there was like a berm into it and then another berm. And there was like a jump out of this, like, uh, you went un- underneath this wall and then you came out of it and then we had to like ice up that ledge as well and you're like kind of waiting until it gets dark to ice it up because you need like shade on it and there was so much that went into it and when he rides away like he just did his last it's his last trick in his part and he's just riding away and he still throws out his hand and gives me five on the way out those little moments are special oh yeah that's perfect for uh guest (laughs) question here from none other than tpg and uh, mind you, he's actually going up the rope toe at Wild Mountain while doing this uh, guest question for a visual. What's up, bomb hole? <laughs> What's up, Spenny? Hey, Tom. Coming to you live from the Wild Mountain rope toe. I just had a question for you. I was wondering if you could walk me through your big day in Denver, Colorado. You know, give me the, the play-by-play of the, the infamous big day in Denver. Um, hope you guys are having a nice chat. I'm excited to listen. Over and out. Thanks, Bro, thanks, open, Tom. Huh? Yeah, that's crazy. We got to get there. Thanks, Tom. Tom is uh, Tom was my sidekick this year, as as I was to him. But uh, driving around the T100 in my truck, Tom is in the front seat, and uh, we we're just just us two in that truck all winter long. So that means a lot. Um, this is my favorite thing, or like uh, when I listen to your show to hear this, like Sage's behind the scenes of Chad's Gap, Joe's hundred foot rail. Not to compare mine to that, I not Chad's Gap. That is fucking crazy. But the like you hear the 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 behind the th- the scenes of these these spots or what worked or what didn't. Like Sam Taxwood's infamous trick that he filmed that never got filmed. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these things are I love hearing about, and especially when you when you don't really know and you you see something and you find out what went into that. Um, in Denver, this year it snowed and everyone went there. Um, we we're calling it the Hunger Games, and each <laughs> each crew. I guess I love Hunger Games. I didn't realize <laughs> Hunger Games. Yeah, I like Hunger yeah. Games. Katniss Everdeen. Uh, each crew was like their own people or whatever. And instead of when someone died, you know, like their name comes up, it's like when they get a clip, like their the cannon shoots and like their faces <laughs> up in the sky. So we're and driving around named. and it's crazy because everyone gets there. It's supposed to snow and it didn't snow. It snowed like a day late and then it started puking. So we're driving around and I had been looking for like spots. You see these things like these, uh, these like overpass spots and for like the last two seasons I've been checking them like maybe there's a spot at one of these things like I see stairs I see a rail maybe it'll work out and we showed up to this thing and it was so dope but it was snowing like literally a foot an hour it was snowing so hard that my eyes were bigger than my stomach at this point and we're like yeah we got this like it looks pretty crazy but like we think we can do this and so we start setting it up, and we're just moving so much snow and making it feel, like, way better than it is. And my original idea was to board slide that that rail because I was thinking it goes, like, it's a, it's a fence, not a rail. It's, like, a, the fence on top. And then 
if you're board sliding something, usually when you get out of a board slide, you fall farther than like a 50, you fall closer, right? Because you like mm-hmm. schloop off or whatever. Yep. And there's the elbow at the end. And the elbow scared me a lot that you could like kind of get pinched in there, like run into that wall or whatever, fall from a certain height. And so when we're doing it, it's snowing so hard, we like clip the top of the fence to make it slideable. And then the next day we had to do this thing for Tommy because it was like a school spot or something. So we had to do it that day and it melted a bunch. And so then the next morning we get to this spot and I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. There is no way I'm hitting this thing. Like half the snow melted. And then I go up to the, the rail and it's galvanized. And so like board sliding galvanized rails is scary. Sometimes you can do it, but there's a kink. And the last thing I wanted to do in my life was Superman down off of that flat which is like 60 feet off the ground. <laughs> Something like ridiculous. Yeah. And there's like that. There's like, so it just, I had a mental breakdown. I was like, dude, this is kind of crazy. I don't know if I got this. And fun fact, anyone wants to get it, get rip it up. There is a smaller version on the other side. It's just a down flat down uh, without like the last, last bottom thing. So I was looking at this one, and I remember I even called Sam Taxwood, which felt, like, selfish at the time because he was out on a knee injury, but I just wanted to, like, I needed someone who I could trust. And I was like, Sam, like, here's this spot. Like, should I just hit this spot, or should I, like, try to hit the bigger one? Like, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I got this because, again, like, the I couldn't board slide it anymore, so I'm thinking if I 50, I'm going to fall, and I have better chances of, like, getting caught up or, like, higher risk. And I'm doing this and I get down to the other spot. And like we were saying earlier with where we were at when we were younger, I'm sure Colton and Tommy would have been like, Hey, you should, uh, you should do this. But (laughs) we're older and like Colton now like cares about my health. And he's like, absolutely not trying to have you hit this. If you don't want to hit this, these guys aren't going to pressure me at all, which is awesome because you're looking out for your friend's health. And then that day, the night before, actually, we needed an extra hand, and I'd reached out to an old friend, Dylan Alito, and I was like, yo, can you come help? Like, I haven't talked to Alito in a long time. Like, we're kind of in different places in our lives, but he was like, hell yeah, I'm down. So he comes, and I'm, like, looking at these guys, and I look over at Alito, and I'm like, you're a crazy person. What do you think? Like, what do you think I should do? He's like, you should hit this shit. And I was like, all right, boys, it's on. Alito got you fired up. Yeah, so it cool. is cool. And he came because we just had Tommy Colton and myself. We needed more help. And, like, uh, yeah, I hadn't I hadn't talked to him in such a long time. And for me, I just, like, reached out, knew he was there. Wanted, like, a, I wanted a spot originally in Denver, and I, I reached out to him. And uh, I was like, Hey, I just, I was like, I don't want to beat around the bush here. Like, I just want to know where the spot is. I'm not gonna be like, Hey, how are you? What do you, what have you been up to by the way? And he was like, no, for sure. If you guys need a hand, do whatever. I know a lot of people have things that they like to think about Dylan. And I think that I, we don't agree on a lot of stuff, but when it came down to it, like an old friend of mine came out and was like super helpful and like made this thing happen. So like, I really appreciate that for him just to show up. Homie put on headphones and starts uh just starts take, like bucket loading this stuff and I was like stopped and I was like hey thank you and he like takes out the headphones he's like I live for this shit <laughs> <laughs> and I was like hell yeah so yeah then we then then at this point we still don't have enough people this is uh the one spot I think this year that we used a bungee for and uh it's just like I had to hit this thing and uh I hit up Chad Unger, who we've been filming with all season, he randomly went on a DC trip because he lives with Ben Billadu and Sam Taxwood, and he just went with them. And I was like, "We need you back! Like <laughs> you've been with us all year. We need you back. You got to take a photo of this." And he's like, "All right." He's like, "Can my buddy come uh, and just hang?" And I was like, "Yeah, for sure. That'd be actually awesome to have another hand." So his buddy Chad is Chad is deaf, and his buddy is also deaf. So I've been hanging with Chad all winter and like learned some ASL American Sign Language, and then buddy came and so he's actually pulling bungee with tommy at the top and so i'm trying to communicate this like scary thing and it starts snowing so he's like tommy's pulling back the bungee and he like looks at the guy he's like you ready and he's like yeah so then i like get the thing and i'm like holding on to it and usually you say like good or whatever and i just have to look at him i'm like let go <laughs> like let go now and it was so wild in the first first go to hit the thing uh it's over the it's over overpass and a semi truck like sees us snowboarding and like lays on the horn. It's like, Burr! 
I like <laughs> went to stop on the lip, like so sketchy. If I actually would have hit it, probably like just like fallen directly onto like the spike at the bottom or something. But hey, one thing uh, before you hit it, there was something else you did uh, where you gave. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that was back to Alito. I I had a Dylan Ojo shirt that I wore that day, and I remember like before I put this shirt on. And was like, all right, this one's for you, buddy. Like, here we go. Like, you're a psycho. You used to hit giant stuff. Like, this is for you. I remember saying, I was like, this one's for you, Dylan. And Alito looked over. I was like, I'm sorry. It's the, it's the other guy. But I, I, I like, shouted out to Ojo and then um, gave Colton, like, my, my keys and my phone and my insurance card. And I was like, this one is really scary. I think I have to... I got to like prep this and like gave him my like password to my phone. Like I was ready to go to, to war for this one thinking that there was like a good chance of getting hurt and, and like know the crossroads of the street. If you got to call an ambulance was another thing. Yeah, right? that was it too, mm-hmm. which might sound like dramatic, but it was just, it, it's just to be safe. I think at that point in time, this is also in my opinion, arguably the heaviest rail ever done on a snowboard. So can that it's not dramatic. But continue. But it, yeah. And then Tommy and I are at the top, and I remember like he's like you, he's like you got this, and I was like, I was like, let's just listen to the song real quick. And I remember we like just put on a song, and we're like both standing at the top, just like bopping around, like getting in the mood. And then it was like game time. And uh, what was the song? Um, I'm gonna hold on to the song. All right. I'm gonna hold on to that. Not one gonna for give me. us a no, song. No, I'm not gonna give that to you. I like the song. I might we might use the song. You know. All right. Um, respect that. I respect yeah. that. Yeah, whatever. So there's like a there's a tree next to it, and so the, f- the first time I'm so scared of the outside because the outside is this big drop, and the the rail isn't straight. If you look at it, the rail isn't straight out of this like tunnel. It like elbows a little bit, so you got to like compensate and get on the inside. And the first one, I just didn't do that. I just hopped onto this thing and just like rode a little bit, and then just flew out of the sky. I remember there's a tree you can see in the photo. I like remember falling through the tree like George of the Jungle style, like. <laughs> wow uh but it was it was fine it, the scary thing was the inside and the inside because the stairs were metal and you go like a hundred miles per hour and then there's the stair set elbows it banks and there's a, a telephone pole so there's a lot of just chaos down there and that's where i ended up getting the most hurt was like when i'd fall on the inside and again this thing we, we'd ask people for help just like we'd ask chad we wanted more people there and hit up John Stark and he was with uh, Cole for their filming for living room, which was with Reed Smith and Savannah. And uh, so they came and um, I was like, kind of, you know, had hit it a few times, but was like losing confidence. And then right as they show up, I go down the stairs and then hit my ass on the last set of stairs and do like a front flip. And I remember I was laying there actually crying, crying from pain, like, whatever and then cold naven like walks over like rushes over and unstraps me and i was like okay this is like my good friend cold naven also a 50 beast this guy is 50 the most big crazy rails ever he owns it that's his thing so i was like if he's here and these guys are here like it all came together just to be like that confidence that last little boost and so yeah i kept going and then just like got the one um and was so surprised riding out uh, and I remember like riding out doing whatever and then ripping open. I had this button down, this North face button down. And this was my goal. Like if I could get to this point that I could be able to open this shirt up and have that Ojo shirt on and show the camera. And I remember I did that and I didn't know what to do at this point. So I just opened it up and I'm like, ah, I'm done. Like I should have said something else, but I had no idea what to do. And that's just how I felt in the moment. And it was the only time I've ever celebrated still strapped in. Tommy is the best. Uh, rolls over and gives me a beer before I even unstrap and doing all this. And I didn't even realize, like, I was, like, bleeding and stuff. And everyone's, like, give me a hug. It was, like, the best moment ever. I actually brought you guys that shirt from the spot that Woo. I was wearing that day. That's incredible. In, in the last thing. Uh, I didn't wash so it, sick. so you can uh, – you can you can handle that absolutely. Dual we're gonna hand. put we're gonna oh, yeah. frame this and put it next to the print that Chad shot of you on the rail, and we're gonna make a perfect little spot. Let's pull, I'm gonna hold this up so that people can see. Look at that it's beautiful. Such a sick shirt too. Uh, that was given to me by um, 
Giovaca, which was one of Dylan's best friends, who uh, lives in Montreal. He did the artwork. Um, I don't know who did the artwork. Yeah. He just was like, yo, what's your address? And just yeah, sent it to sick. me. And I was like, hell yeah. And then another cool thing, like just those little things, uh, it was, this was just so special, like uh, especially with, with Dylan and everything and how much he means to us is we had a bunch of beers, like random beers. There was like an IPA in there somehow. I think that's what Tommy gave me when I landed it. And then Colton was like, hey, there's – there's one, um, one Corona left, and Corona was obviously like if anyone knows Dylan or has been seeing whenever we do like these um, memorials for him, it's always the Coronas. And so we went went to the bottom of the rail, and I popped the Corona, and I like cheers off of his face, and then I go to drink it. And Colton's filming 16 millimeter, so it's it's film, and and as he's panning up, the film ran out, so you get that film burn that people like try to get and it's such like it can be like that magical moment because you can't do the same you can't replicate that and so for that little moment like to have one last corona and then to like cheers it off my buddy and then like to have it run out of film and that was actually the last thing we filmed for good sport was that last spot right there and that last clip so wow that's amazing beautiful beautiful bookend for that um beautiful way to wrap it up now I have to ask. Obviously, you you know Dylan was so close to you and so many others, and and he was known for like just he, you would hit the heaviest spots still to this day. <coughs> heaviest spots. Oh yeah, like shit that does doesn't people shit doesn't stack up to th- these days. You know. Now do you do you find motivation in you know knowing like doing it for him or do you at, then in a sidebar. Because I have a friend that passed, and I find comfort almost like he's watching out for me. Do you ever feel either of those things? Or Yeah, and this is going to go back to me talking about another trick I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's in the part, it opens the part. We went to Russia, and he hit that rail, blue rail. It's in um, the Vans video. He does a 5-0 on it. Mm-hmm. And so when we got there, we're like, we got to go see this this uh, this rail. Like for us to go see like a, this thing that our buddy did, like we have to go. So we get the pin, and it's on the other side of that, the one that he did, there's a bigger one. So we pull up, and we're like, what? There's a flat on the end of it? Did they cut that out? And then we're like, wait, that's a bigger rail. That's a different version of the one Dylan hit. So we're like, I was like, okay, I have to hit that spot. I That's, that's what I want to do. So that was the first thing I did on that trip when I had the opportunity was go and hit that spot as, you know, like an ode to him. And I had, at the time, you know, we had the ride burnout. It was the Ojo board with his chain on it and his face on the front of the board. Um, I was wearing my Ojo pin, my my Ojo t-shirt at the time, different one than that one. And I have two Ojo tattoos, you know, like it means a lot to me. And so we start setting this thing up and it's the top part of it's a parking lot. Um, and so we like do the pump bumps, getting into it. And I'm like testing the speed, getting there. And then someone would come with this giant Russian tanker that's what all the cars there are they're like huge and just blow through like my my dropping ramp so i did it a couple times so i probably rolled into it like 13 times or something and just didn't quite have the speed and then finally i was like all right like time let's let's go let's hit this thing and so first try i jumped onto it i got to the end like just miraculously like perfect and it was crazy i'm riding out and Derek lever was freaking out and uh, he was like, if that, if I had my favorite sports moment, that would be my favorite sports moment right there. And I remember him saying, he's like, I think someone was looking out for you for that. And I'm not really like spiritual like that or, or really anything, but that was like, it kind of like made the, like, you know, like the, the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Like it like had that like weird special feeling that that was really hard to put into words as, as you can hear right now. Um, so those two things also were with like with doing it and when it was like an ode it they they turned out so i gotta like really pick and choose when i wear these shirts i gotta really <laughs> use it for the right occasion mm-hmm. yeah that's incredible a little too serendipitous or divine or whatever whatever you, you want to call but, it um and, and then another special moment seems like when the new zealand uh mm. snow park it's that's it's snow park rail right that's yeah right yeah there, there's, yeah. Explain this. Explain the story. Yeah, that. I wrote a story. Um, I think that I went into uh, snowboarder mag. Also, RIP. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> uh, um, 
yeah, I we w- wanted to go back to that thing because we went there for the Lords of the Chicken Eight um, with Ojo and John Stark, Max Warrington, Colt Morgan, um, Blake Paul was on that. Cole Navin, you know, all the good homies, and he did that. He did that board slide with no snow. Like it was so funny. We we're like, it was worse than uh, than going to the back of the like. Uh, the Zamboni or like whatever the, yeah, the, ice, the ice rink. Yeah. Yeah. And getting that snow. Um, there was nothing. So we did that so when we were in New Zealand, it snowed and we're like, Oh, let's go up to this thing. So it snows enough. We go up there. The gate is locked and somehow we just picked the lock. Like we just did. I don't know who did it. Someone did something. And this gate just like opens up. And then we go there and we get it set up and uh, someone comes and goes to kick us out. And then we like kind of told them the story and they're like, Oh, this is like, this is for our friend. Like we don't really care to be here. Like we just want to do this. And they're like, Oh hell yeah. And so for it, and it was the exact same day. I keep missing that. Really the same day, same day, two years later. So like the same day it snows and then we go up there, we like get through this lock and then we like go to get kicked out and they let us do it. And then we snowboard on this thing. And we were there with, uh, at the time it was, uh, Carlos Garcia Knight. And um, Marcus Skin was filming. And so those guys kind of, like, gave us a moment, like me and Sam, a moment afterwards because we brought up, like, some roses and and some Coronas. And, and Sam and I had, like, a little – because it's so beautiful there, you know. Mm-hmm. And you're, like, looking over these mountains, and it was just, like, for our homie. And so, yeah, there's these things, like, all these times that are so special that kind of are, like, these weird, miraculous moments that have to do with, with Ojo, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's, That's special. Cool. And and he did a boardy, and you put your – what tell him what trick you did because it was extremely heavy given the nature of that. Well, I board slid that shit first try. I was actually talking shit to Ojo when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's more snow, but I was like, yeah. what? why Why did you make such a big deal? I did that first try, <laughs> I guess. Whatever. Um, I did uh, the switchback lip pretzel. So Ooh. heavy. Super fucking heavy. Um, we're gonna have to pull that clip up and put it in. Yeah, show that. That, clip. that was like going hard for your boy. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, buds, let's get into the bomb hole of the week. What do we got going on? First, I want to tell you a little bit about ZipTech. What is ZipTech, bud? ZipTech allows you to connect your jacket and your pants together with a zipper. It's patented. Their pros use it. Um, I use it. Why? I'll tell you what. It keeps the winter out of the pantalones. That's Spanish for pants. Spanish for pants. Yes, I'm working on my Spanish. It keeps the elements out. It keeps you dry. It's going to keep you on the slopes longer, which is pretty much the ideal day up there, right? Do any of their top pros uh, say maybe Marcus Cleveland, a.k.a. Cleveland Steamer? The Steamer. You're not going to see his kit steaming because the moisture's kept out. Wow. It's a zip anti-moisture works. technology. It's patented. It's patented. Okay. Noted. What about, uh, you know, Pat Moore, although, he, you know, he, he lands unbelievable tricks. We're patented talking- Moore? Yeah, Pat did more. He does, you know, front 12s, back 10s. A lot of times, you know, on, on the road to land in those, he lands on his back. Aggressive head dips. Yes. Yeah. So is he is this helping him out at all? It's helping him out. Have you seen Mike Rav roll around in the snow in between tricks? Oh, yeah, yeah. Those okay. are tricks, and it's keeping him dry okay. all day. Volcom, Zip Tech, let's go. If you want to win, hashtag Volcom Bomb Proof. Okay. Let's see your best bales. Let's see those big burgundy bomb holes as we like to call them over here, and you're going to have a prize pack sent out to you full of some Volcom swag, some uh, good stuff from the good people at the bomb hole. That's us. That's me and you. It is. And uh, Best Bale is going to take home the prize. Let's do this. So just to clear it up, uh, if you if you take a bale ski, upload it on Instagram, hashtag what, buds? Hashtag Volcom Bomb Proof. And you'll uh, potentially get a prize. Uh, I like that uh, big burgundy bomb hole. We might have to run with that. <laughs> we might have to go with that. Let's do it. Well, I think that's... You know, very special what you guys did. I, I don't even know. That's uh, probably an understatement, uh, uh, you know, for what you guys did and the effect he's had on snowboarding, the community, the culture, the way he's inspired, uh, the way he continues to inspire, um, y- you know, and, and I'm just curious as to, like, what effect did that, his passing, have on you? Me and I think the whole community and, like, my close friends, uh, I think I'm like maybe lucky or privileged to not had experienced a loss that close to me at that time. He was the first and most significant by a long shot. Um, It was like so, so many new emotions and I just didn't know 
even what that was. Hadn't experienced anything like that in my life. But it was cool to go through that with, like, so many close friends. I think the biggest thing that helped me with Ojo is to see how the snowboard community stood up when his passing, with his passing. Like, every single person was doing something or, or saying something. And to see the reach that he had on this community helped me personally with the issues I'd had of, like, coming to terms with, like, my identity, like, thinking I was, like, oh, I'm a snowboarder, like, I don't have any, like, that many other interests, like, is this all I am? Like, is this just, you're just this, that's what I, that's your identity, like, that's all you can say about yourself? Like, I am not into, like, music or art or any of this, like, what defines you? And I felt like that was, like, I don't know, stupid, really. I was like, that's it. And then when he passed and you can see that his reach was to so many people and and he had inspired that many people to it made me proud to be a snowboarder. It made me proud to think that you can reach this many people and what you do actually might mean something to someone. And it really made me proud to like be his friend, you know? And to have that. So that was really cool. That was like really cool to see and um, just have known him and be able to try to carry that and know that it it's it does mean something and it, it's it's cool to be a snowboarder you know to to go through that with all of your other friends is awesome too because it wasn't it wasn't a loss for any of us personally it was a collective thing and and now it's changed with like so many of your friends to say like I love you or like how are you and all this thing and break down that barrier of like being a whatever it is like too masculine or anything else like that it has made everyone come so much closer together and so I you know you have to thank Ojo for that and you have to understand that he really played a huge role in all of us um, being able to to be closer to each other mm-hmm and grow up, right? Yeah, totally. There's so much. To deal with the emotions that. are hard. Everyone handles grief differently. It's such a tough thing. So it's nice to have a group like that for support. Yeah, I, I noticed know. a change well, in go, all you guys going, too. You going know? back to grief too, like you said, everybody's at different different phases, and it's really difficult. And you know, a couple of notable touch points is like I think that somebody's ability to find humor in heavy situations is a, is a good thing in, in a lot of, you know, when you're, when you're in trials and tribulations in your life, but more importantly that, you know, everybody's at different phases of grief, but, you know, dealing with certain situations we all have in our lives like that. um, You ask yourself, the healthy question to ask yourself is what would Dylan want? What would Dylan want right now? And, and, you know, for me, that would be, what would Simon want from the past ways? Yeah. And so, I know that it wouldn't be for me to be really sad. I think it's okay to identify the emotion. I'm sad I miss my friend. That is a healthy emotion. You can identify that. That That's totally normal. But what is also so significant and so beautiful is what's the best way to honor your friend? Well, you just went and did the biggest fucking handrail anybody's ever done in the fucking history of snowboarding with a Dylan Ojo shirt on. Like, He'd be proud, right? Fucking imagine him at the bottom of the rail giving you a hug. He'd be like, dude, that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, and I have to tell my favorite story about him. Is uh, <laughs> This was in the forward year, and we were like in a stupid little hotel together. This is like pre-Airbnb, which is the best thing <laughs> that has happened to street snowboarding, or I guess snowboarding as a whole, is being able to be in a place with a kitchen. But... We're in Quebec, and we were like, oh, we got to go, like, try to eat, like, a salad or something. Like, we've just been eating, like, Tim Hortons, Timmy O's trash for, like, the last week. So we go and get a bunch of stuff. We're making this salad. I got this pear to cut up to put in the salad. He's like, dude, pear in a salad? That's gross. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. And he's like, dude, that's nasty. And I was like, no, it's good. And he's like, no. And so I was like, all right. So I, like, cut it up. I put it in my salad. And I was like, why don't you just have a bite of mine? And then you could see if you like it or not. And he's like, whatever. And then, like, went and, like, had a bite and didn't say anything. 
walked over and grabbed the rest of the cut up pear and put it in his salad because he <laughs> liked it. But he did not want to admit that he, he did. It. Yeah, no, it was so good. But like, I can't ever get that out of my head. Like, dude, pear is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Pear is so good in a salad. Yeah, the pears are fire in a salad. And back to that day, like, when we, afterwards, we go down into Portland, and it just so happened that, like, everyone, like, a bunch of his really close friends happened to be in Portland. And it's, like, background on my phone to this day. But it was, you know, Colton was there. Mark was there. Derek. Jed was there. I've said all these names, but I, you can figure out. And then, um, you know, Daryl Mathis, we're at his place, and uh, there was just, and then the crew we were already with, with like Kuzik and Blake and Sam, and and so many people, and and Alex that was there as well. Wiz, I have so many names for him; it's hard. Alex Wiz, Little Sherman, and uh, it was so fucking cool to like have that everyone be there randomly, serendipity, like, and we could all go through that together. But the another takeaway was, I saw Jed. And uh, he, he's still, like, my favorite snowboarder ever. And so I can't, even being his friend, I still can't lose that uh, that starstruck moment. So I see him. I'm like, what's up, Jed? How are you? I was like, stupid, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid thing to say. I'm like, he's not good. Neither am I. <laughs> no one's good. <laughs> <laughs> Jed, how was your season? <laughs> Any good tricks go down? <laughs> <laughs> Cab 2 pretzel? Was that hard? <laughs> Okay, speak of the devil, let's get into name that video part. Here we go. <laughs> name that video part is presented by Mammoth Mountain, which is actually a huge part of why uh, Spencer Schubert's here. Yeah, my parents met in Mammoth, and my brother was actually born there. I spent a lot of time growing up in Mammoth. So without Mammoth, you might not even exist, huh? I think that's safe to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, their park is always firing. Uh, I love going there. I think they have some of the best park jumps in the country. Um, and if you want to see Buds in his element, he absolutely beats down the mini pipe. Love the mini pipe. Love the small jumps. Uh, Chris is killing the big jumps. You know what else? They got eight parks, three different pipes. So there's something for all levels of ability out there. Even uh, rip groomers, jump some cliffs. All of the above. So we got a cool thing going on. If you know the answer to name that video part, the uh, listener edition, what do you get, bud? You're going to get a four-pack of tickets. Four you and tickies. Your, yeah, you and your crew can uh, show us what's up in Mammy. Let's do this. All right, Spenny, uh, you've been talking he about... He nervous. I am nervous, <laughs> nervous now. <laughs> talking about the, you know, sacred ways of the street, <coughs> video parts, their holiness. The code. The code. And can I even name one now? <laughs> That's is there the any? <laughs> is, is, yeah. Can I even do it? Okay. Uh, confidence level zero through 10. Fuck it, 10. Oh, just to say, because confidence is key, and I'm probably going to blow it. Love it. Here we go. Um, I know this one, and I can't believe you went there. You're going to hit me with the 32 movie. And that part is Cost Lemons. And I think that was even a soundbite of Alito in there. That wasn't even Cost, was it? That was Cost. It was Cost? You got that. Yeah, we're not going to dock you for that, but it was Cost. Um, yeah, obviously. One of my favorite snowboarders as well. Also, one of the coolest tricks in that video part was the um olympic stadium the toe jam the yeah the into the rainbow so and then toes in and then and then riding out yep you get a bag of goodies from the bomb hole yep everything can be found on uh bombhole.com thanks, bomb so thanks so much thanks so much bombhole.com get that merch kid all right so uh part two this is for the listeners the uh, video nerds out there if you will if you know what video part this is when this episode comes out on instagram there'll be a picture of spencer this thumbnail photo him in the booth that is where we pick our winner. The first person to comment that they know what video this is from, we'll send them out what, buds? Prize pack, kid. That is absolutely correct. I know you're going to know this one, Spencer, so don't say it. Here we go. Okay, thank you guys for tar participating in Name That Video Part. 
Okay, I can relax now. Everything is over. The whole buildup from this entire show. <laughs> We're good. You're not going to be... Yeah, if you didn't get it, imagine how much you'd be beating yourself up with the stupid, stupid, stupid the whole time. Oh, uh, yeah, right? Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Jed doesn't like me. Chris doesn't like me. <laughs> no one likes me. All right. Well, we've been talking board talk for a long time. Now, a lot of people are kind of relating you to somebody like Mark Cuban. Bit of an entrepreneur. A little bit of a glizzy. Yeah. Oh. Glizzy scenario. I think I, I, comp- I think I identify more to the glizzy. Yep. Than the Mark Cuban, but thank you. I'll take that. Uh, you got a new business, a new old business, a re a resurgence of this hoodie I'm wearing right now, Cobra Dogs. Uh, tell the tell the people what the hell's going on with Cobra Dogs. What's going on? With Cobra I wouldn't Dogs? say I. It's a we. It's a we. Yeah. Okay. So it's Derek. Lieber. You're the front man now, though. You're you're fucking talking. I'm the talking mic. about. Yeah, it. you're here. You're uh, the Derek cameras, Lieber, the mic. Uh, Alex Sherman, also Wiz, also the Littlest, <laughs> and myself. So, it came about. Um, it came about super organically to bring this thing back to life, and it wasn't actually the original goal, and it just came to that, so which I think is really awesome. Um, Derek bought a food truck and had a different venture in mind. Um, I'd been talking about it with him a little bit. I was maybe going to be involved, maybe not. You know, you are just still figuring it out. Um, and then one day he calls me up, and he's like, this thing's red. There's like a red apron. The food truck is red. I'm looking at this red apron. What about Cobra Dogs? And I was like, whoa, I didn't even think of that. That's crazy. I, don't, I was like, I don't think that's quite my place to say. I had worked there for two years and been, like, you know, really involved. But the person who hired me was Alex. I was like, you should call Alex. Like, call Wiz. See what Wiz thinks. I think he's, like, a better – he would have a better say than me. Um, and he was into it. And so then the next step was to reach out to, to Corey Grove – because he had run this thing for I think it was, I think it was thirteen years, um, from start to finish, and um, yeah, the founder and and everything else and made it what it was. And I think he just had so much on his plate that when it came time, he just he couldn't run it anymore. And so we wanted to reach out to him, and it being us, I think it was a really cool thing where I think other people had reached out or other people saw it as something that they could make money from or wanted to bring it back to life and, and could do it in the wrong way. But being us and Alex had working there for so long, I'd worked there and he knew Derek very well. And he's like, I can, I can officially pass this torch and feel confident, confident that they're going to take it and they're going to keep continue to build this name and, and have the legacy that it already has and, and really be able to grow off of it versus have it take a turn for the worse. So um, it just kind of happened like that. And it's been super fun to bring it back and to have this this icon in snowboard history be be back and have something for people to like a really it, it's it's hot dogs for sure hoodies are cool but the 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 community and the space that it brings and when it's at the bottom of Mount Hood or if it's at the bottom at at Wendell's at the skate park or you know wherever it might be it really is this like gathering point that people can get together and and do whatever and. Um, hang out, which is huge. And that's what we want to do when we want to make it that and have that same hype and like feeling that you can get when you go to this place. Is it a financial transaction or a bronancial transaction to get this endeavor? What is a bronancial transaction? He just passed a torch. (laughs) There's no flames. There's no (laughs) flames because there's actually propane in the truck. So if you add flames... I think that might be a financial transaction when it goes in, when you have to go to the insurance because you blew up the truck. But um, yeah, we came, we come to agreement. That's Corey's cool. still involved. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's all there and I think it happened really well. And um, yeah, he's, he's still involved in the whole thing. Love well, if you, seeing it if back, you think right? about the amount of people that have been to Mount Hood and you know, if, if I think about Cobra dogs, it's like, fuck went to hood every summer for basically my fucking adult life from like, <laughs> 17 on and hammered cobra dogs pretty much every fucking day look forward to them you know yeah you get it's at the bottom of the hill hood, you like, get a cobra man. dog it's like burned into people's brains you know it's like that it's a perfect uh it's got some beautiful nostalgia to it draplin made a great logo it's a good move yeah another guest of yours i got a patreon question okay from johnny b johnny just, b just curious what kind of discount a cobra dog's tattoo gets me it's a good question 
Yeah, I think at least 50 cents off, I <laughs> would say. Um, it depends if you can show it to us every time, too. And if the you size just of it, bro. Claim you have it. Yeah, size, well, too. We're big on promo codes. What if you use promo code BOMBHOLE at checkout when you're at Cobra Dogs? Is there like BOMBHOLE 20? 20% or 30, 15, I five? think we could make a deal. We'll, we'll turn the handle. cameras off. We'll make a deal. <laughs> yeah. It's too bad we couldn't give give away a Cobra Dog as a prize, but I just don't think it won't, it'll keep. Yeah, I no, flew no. here from Portland, <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't really know. I don't you should really have brought us some glizzies. Son. Yeah. Do you know the term glizzy? I do know the term glizzy. Slang for a hot dog. So. And also a Glock, right? Yep. Yeah. Also a Glock, yes. That's so absolutely whatever, more kid want. friendly is hot dog. I prefer the kid friendly one yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that you're in the biz. In the hot dog biz. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I mean, look at that logo, too. That's it's some actually sharp, a, it's not a logo, it's a Logie. Logie one can design lifestyle. that. It is, yeah. it's, it's a lifestyle. It is it is a lifestyle brand. It is a lifestyle. All right. I think it could be time to get into some hot takes. Um, this week's hot takes is presented by Oakley, a big supporter of myself and now the show. And, uh, I run the line miner goggle with the prism lenses, quality product. I don't know what I run yet. I'm just waiting for a packy. He's waiting for that pack. Let's, let's get him going. (laughs) Let's talk prism. First things. Let's talk prism. uh, Great. (laughs) Great periff. We're going to use the term periff. Real good peripheral. Really good periff. So first things first, MJ of snowboarding, Michael Jordan. Both male and female. Who you got? Jed. Jed Anderson. Quick with it. Jed. Yeah, and if you think about this whole MJ thing, <clears throat> you know how he went to baseball for a little bit? Mm-hmm. I remember when Jed wasn't really snowboarding for a little bit, just skating, and he came back. He's like, I'm still the best. Mm-hmm. Is that not the most MJ God thing? Damn it. That's, that's an MJ a, that's moment fucking, right there. It's a great point. That's a great point. Yeah, I came back, did it. Still, still the best. I might be switching my answer. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, you that like gets that. people thinking, mm-hmm. I think. Because mm-hmm. it's like he went to baseball, but Jed actually kind of like, Skate career a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's still doing that too. I don't know if MJ is still hitting balls, but you know, I think that that comparison plus for me is still the best. Mm. If Jed started smoking cigars and basically paying like betting like a hundred thousand dollars on like putts and golfing, um, then he'd be even more significantly closer. And then to MJ. maybe in like twenty years, he's there's going to be a meme about him crying. <laughs> <laughs> there's that classic one. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Yeah. Maybe after that, I can actually talk to him like a person. Well, hello. You still can't talk to him like a person. <laughs> All right. So, uh, next. Female. He didn't give us female. Yeah, female. Female goat. Okay. Female. Jan of mine. Um, huge influence on me, uh, being from Bend, and just an all-around badass. Back rodeos on Mammoth Park jumps. Back rodeo fives have you just blind. Ah, that, that is just incredible. Second, second, wait, hold on. It's five blind, but you do seven. Seven's more blind. No, you can see the seven's seven when you, the most when you, when blind you drop, when you drop it down. See, I never at no point in time am I seeing. And you're I'm you're just it, yeah. I think there's something there. I don't turn my head though. I go more. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well. Yeah, and then, um, kind of kind of like MJ. Uh, when she was over it, she bailed. Mm. So, left uh, gracefully. Yep. Okay. Next question: If you go heliboarding with three people, who would it be? Three people, who would it be? Um, okay, it's going to be <clears throat> Bob Plum, number one, because I've ridden powder with Bob Plum in Japan, and he is just terrible at it. And I want to see that. Yeah, but in AK, he, he I like, want to have that satisfaction to watch. He just does the stiff legs, you know, doesn't bend knee. Oh, and then he's got the back back on, style. so you got your yeah. top heavy. Mm-hmm. Your, your prison weight. It's you all up top, funny. and you, you're going to fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would have uh, thought he'd be good. That's reverse so crazy pendulum. to me. No, a lot of ragdolls. A lot These of high-speed ragdolls. Skills. That's the thing is he was he was all about that, like, turn lifestyle for so long. Yeah. But you know he comes from the streets. Look at his covers. That's a good point. Or street right. covers. Good point. Yeah. Yep. He's a wannabe turn guy, but he really is a street really guy. A street he wants to be back in there. Um, and then S- Sam Taxwood and Blake Paul. Okay. Next que- uh, next trend, worst trend in snowboarding. What do you got? Uh, worst trend is the snowboard pants rolled up above the boot. I just don't get it at all. Um, are your boot's going to get wet. Aren't we in snow? People say sometimes, they're like, oh, well, I want to see what my feet are doing. You're like, well, then why are you looking at your feet when you're jibbing? Like, what do you, what's going on? That's with why this? they do it? I don't know. No one knows. It's a great I don't know. Your boots it's the most wet. common answer. Pants go over them. It's great. Okay, most underrated snowboarder. Who you got? Mark Wilson. Mark has put out so many fire parts and so many badass tricks, and it's not like he's he's a pro snowboarder, and he rides for dope companies and do- goes on dope trips and is in dope movies, but I think that he people don't realize the amount of heat he's put out. 
Mark Wilson. Great answer. Best video part ever filmed. <clears throat> you guys, what was the opener of the Get Real again? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Edward Sharp? Yeah. Best video part ever. Um, I'm going to shout out my boy, Tommy Gesme in Blender. Solid. I'm just going off the top. I don't think. No, okay, I'm switching it all up. Switch Travis Parking Lane. Woo! Yeah, that's the real Didn't one. See that that's coming. the real one. I was I had my head in the wrong place. I had my head in my ass. Love it. I mean, both both respectable answers yeah. for the record. Both Very answers. respectable. Uh, love it. Okay, uh, before we start, kind of wrapping this thing up, we got another guest question from a friend of yours. Here we go. What's up, bombhole? Blake oh. here with a guest question for Spenny. Uh, over the years, Spenny, you and I have been on a bunch of fun trips from the Dragon Frameless Tours, riding in Jackson, Mount Bachelor, going to Japan for the North Face Pult movie. Uh, I always see you getting a bunch of good footage in the backcountry and riding POW, jumping, doing rodeos and shit. Um, why don't we see you ride in the backcountry more? What keeps you dedicated to riding in the streets? And will we see you ride POW more in the future? Well, that's a great question. That's a thanks, great question. Thanks, Blake. One of my best friends right there. Um, I think that's a really good question. I want to do more backcountry stuff. You know, I have grew up riding, like, powder and in the snowy mountains and, wh and whatever else. And um, I think when it came to good sport, I wanted to have, like, I really wanted to put all my focus into just, like, a one, to just street footage. And I'd been doing so many parts that were, like, a little bit of, a little bit of, something here, like whether it's like sicky and real snow and also the torment vid and pulp and lick the cat and not focusing ev all my attention to one thing. And that being said with like backcountry and street, I just wanted to go in and then they turn into a two year project. And I think, you know, at that point, Tommy and I really put, um, <clears throat> really put all of our focus into it. And in the back of my head, I was thinking, you know, I just want to, I want to do this well and I want to do, something to put all my attention to it. And then from this point, I want to get more into the backcountry for sure. I mean, riding powder is the best part about snowboarding, but uh, those last two years with good sport um, just meant a lot. And I want to thank Colton for uh, being there for us and, and putting all that effort in and um, making this happen. Uh, it means so much. And again, like Blake said, th from the Dragon Frameless Tours, he was there, keep the change, everything we've been talking about. Um, thank you so much for, for all the time. And it was really cool to be able to film with Tommy again because we had spent a lot of time apart pretty much since, like, we first started with Frameless, had never really been on the same project. So doing that and then moving forward for me, I want to do more powder stuff. Absolutely. Let's give Colton that uh, super air horn. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, yeah, because we see you do, you know, you've done – Cab nines recently, um, switchback rodeos, back rodeo seven, the back rodeo sevens, dude. You got to keep doing those. Holy shit, that's a that's a heater. I, I got lucky with that one from the, from the the time it, when when I was a kid. I think Jonah Jonah used to bust those things. If you <laughs> remember, he had a dope one. So maybe if it was from that, yeah, I think people would be stoked because I think that would be that would be a pleasant surprise to watch you uh, still stay in the streets. Don't go, in the words of Justin Meyer, the backcountry, the place where pro snowboarders go to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural progression. No. <laughs> so Justin Meyer. I love quote. that one. But you still got to stay in the streets. You know, don't, don't be scared. That's don't because he doesn't want to <laughs> hike. That metal. That's because Justin <laughs> has never worn not cotton in his life. That's why he said that's where he goes to die. He yeah. gets wet and he's just stuck up he's there. He's over it. He's yeah. not trying to do any of it. So no, not hike. at all. Not I hate it. to say it, I love that quote. God, That's a great a good quote. One. Yeah, no, I, I think riding powder with your friends is the best thing. It's like the, it is the the opus of snowboarding. Like going to Brighton and riding those like first few laps on Millie is the best. You you do whatever you have to do to get there, whether that's like you're the contest rider and – you're a pipe rider, you're, you're, you do this, or you're an Instagram snowboarder, you're like a turn guy or whatever, which kind of goes into the powder thing. But you do that so you can snowboard with your friends. It's not like, of course, you take pride in what you do and you want to do what you do the best that you can do it or have the most fun or whatever, but it comes down to like 
that time or the springboarding with your friends I, or whatever else. So spring uh, park jumps. Yeah, I, springs just. Nice. I want to do. Th- I want to ride powder. I just wanted to be able to ride powder without getting those like those sideways looks of like oh. Yeah, that's what you do now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say uh, the city gets two feet of snow in Salt Lake, but also Brighton gets two feet of fresh. Where are you going that that morning? You, you, you. The, the snow is going to be powder. You're, you're streets, up there. Yeah, you're up there. Of course. And then hit the streets after. You could do whatever. It's yeah. a sign of maturity. That's good. Is that uh, a kind of a test for him? Yeah, just a little, little test. I don't know. Everyone. Some people rush right to the streets. You know. Myself included as a photographer. Well, say you go street. You go streets first. That's my first time hearing that in person. I've heard so much about yeah, it on fir- the show. The fur photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F-E-R is how it's yeah, 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 okay. Did I say fur photographer? <laughs> you definitely <laughs> did. Uh, I just, it's like an honor at this yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> I, so good, my Photo dude. And fur photographer. Yeah. Like, I really Pho? feel like I've been uh, been a part of yeah, it. I can fur- I, the, one list, the one thing you're missing you is uh, if you've ever heard him pronounce milk, you pronounce it milk. Milk. So, what about pillow? Pillow. Uh-oh. See, he, no, he's going. He's trying because the camera. No, he kept <laughs> natural I've conversation. never said hello. hello in my life. Sometimes I think he's referring to Mel Gibson. Hello. He's asking for milk. milk. Do you have a glass of Mel Gibson? <laughs> I don't think I've ever said photographer. <laughs> no, well, no, no, no. No, you've never said fur <laughs> no, 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 no. So going back to your uh, body of work here, you know, you filmed eleven video parts. Body of that's a body of work. That's a body of work. Eleven video parts is a body of work. Do you feel? As though good sport is your kind of, uh, is your opus? I don't know what opus means. I'm going to be it's, honest with you. <laughs> it's like that dope, your dopest project. Is it? Oh, is that what opus yeah. means? Okay. Yeah, the pinnacle, right? Yeah. I don't know. I was looking up words in my car outside. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I was Wikipedia, how to sound smart on podcasts. And I was like, I was reading the dictionary before I came in the bomb hole and I found the word opus. I went to a the Isn't source. Is there another word to it? <laughs> You're I looking it up? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. It would, it would, it would seem like a bummer if you can't think that it could be um, up from there, but I think, I think when the like the streets and and how good Colton is w- at what he does and the amount of effort we put into everything, I think that that is probably like yeah the the pinnacle of what it will be in like the the street snowboarding realm. Uh, yeah, the whole thing for sure. Magnum so I, opus. I don't know what that means. Magnum opus. It means a uh, a great work. Okay. The greatest achievement. I would of say an your ba- your ba- would writer. you consider what would you consider your magnus opus? Magnum. Magnum. Magnum opus. Like a single trick. Single trick? It has to be the 50. It's a 50 I mean, I talked right? about it for like an hour. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's his it magnum be, opus. Yeah, that's his magnum opus. We're, right let's start using that term and yeah, beating it to like death. That. We're going to beat the hell out of that. One. Magn- magnum opus is going to be kind of Not that we got it right. A regular Which verbiage. I hope it doesn't sound like too pretentious or whatever. <gasps> no, like, fuck no way, that. man. That's an achievement. I right watched there. that clip and I literally, I, I don't remember. I was probably with you. At the premiere, yeah. This I was like, guy went nuts. I was like, I think that was the heaviest street clip ever filmed. He said that Who on the spot. You know, somebody might crucify me for that, but that's why I back it. In um, your opinion. I, yeah. I mean, and yeah, fucking that's, I, that's all he's got that's, is his own all, opinion. Yeah, that, I know, I know. That's well, it's the thing is. That's what people say. They're entitled to their opinion, but their opinion's fucking wrong. <laughs> it's the only <laughs> issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so if you do, you have any um, <laughs> advice? Oh, actually, one thing we got to note: we got to note you filmed Good Sport through a fucking pandemic. That's another sidebar. Russia. Right? Yeah. There's You're like, I'm not leaving. Merman. He's never leaving. Yeah, Russia. Yeah. Did you remember that on Tommy's story when we were? It hit. So the pandemic hit, and we're in Russia, and then there was like the the mandatory, um, whatever it was from from Europe. Um, what was that called? Uh, it was like evacuation. Yeah it, seemed, yeah, it seems like lesser than that. But yeah, everyone had to come back. And then I got woken up by the boys at like three in the morning or something. Like, we have to get out of here, blah, blah, blah. And like all of Europe has to go. And then I was like, oh, shit, we're not in Europe. We're in Russia. We're good. And so there was Asia. There, there wasn't that. And we could stay longer. And so we were like kind of like tiptoeing on whether or not it was like okay to be there. And at this point, all all of Europe had left, and we didn't want to go at the same time and be stuck in JFK in customs for 10 hours with a bunch of people who might have this COVID, right? Uh, so we were just kind of like waiting it out, but we didn't want to get stuck in Russia. So we were just like tiptoeing every day, you know, which made it really hard to like plan out a trip because usually you're like, oh, I'll hit that thing in like, you know, I'll hit that on a Sunday. You're like, do we have till Sunday? Do we leave tomorrow? We were there. Uh, but my favorite thing is like we're 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 going and we're going and going and then eventually it was like yo we got to get out of here like this is crazy while we were there there was like all of the memes 
like qu- quarantine memes of people stuck in their houses and we're still out trying to like film spots. And Russia's like, no, there's only seven cases. And you're like, yeah, yeah, for sure. You guys are trustworthy, right? Remember <laughs> Chernobyl? <laughs> yeah. No, there was only a couple deaths there <laughs> for sure. But when we left, I remember hitting up Chip, Justin Keniston, my roommate here, also your neighbor. He, uh, I was like, do we need anything? Like, are we good on food? Like, what's going on? He's like, there's no toilet paper. And there's a really long line for the liquor store. So I was like, okay. I like, left <laughs> a lot of my stuff behind, like a, like a bunch of shit. And I think, like, some things out of Louis. Louis got a lot lighter. Than really? Too, Lewif, unfortunately. Louis shed it some weight. Yeah, I was told had you to were willing back. to stay. I was down to stay. For, I, to get it done, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, our... our Original date that we left, we were supposed to leave. It was like the 28th or something. I think that was the last day you were able to leave Russia after we got back. We left like a week early. But I what if you didn't leave? You'd be stuck there? Stuck there. Having a Citizen good time. Citizen of Murmansk. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? That would be an interesting one. Good sport would probably look a little better, though. They'd probably have some, a couple more clips. Better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, get a handful more no, but but maybe, maybe maybe at the five, end, six I left all the stuff out of my board bag and packed it with toilet paper and vodka. <laughs> and we wrote an article on it, but that's what we brought back. <laughs> I, remember, yeah, I got back with, with like my board bag and opened it up and it was like chip open. He's like, Aah. it was like really nice. Cause vodka there is so like really cheap and good. Good vodka yeah. in Russia. Yeah. And that toilet paper was bad. It yeah, was not bad. nice toilet paper. They don't have the same standards. No. But we, God, we left a bunch like, of stuff, like boots. Anything heavy was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> toilet the paper and vodka. potty toilet paper that's like fucking, you get one square. It's and like it a rip. cardboard yeah, square. Jesus. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, oh, that man. was crazy during the pandemic for sure. I can't believe that's what you brought back. Unreal. All right, well, we've been going. Uh, I think we should do, uh, you should talk about the brands that you ride for your setup. What are you What are you rocking there? What do you got okay. behind you? I got this. Talking, try to talk into the mic. Bring it with me. Bring it with you. All right, Bring so, with you. Uh, this is the Ride Burnout. Um, 158 because that's what you ride when you're over six foot, right, Cole? Navin, he rides a 55. I don't understand. I've been trying to tell him. I'm like, dude, you can do this. Ride the bigger board. He's not over six feet. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Coco. Coco's like Coco's like over 200 pounds. He's built like he could be a but he's up safety, over six linebacker. Feet, a safety in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. So this is the ride burnout. Cole did the Cole did the graphic for it, and he did the graphic for the Ojo board as well. So this is really cool. Super happy to be riding um, a board with that my friend did the graphic for. This is um, my boot here. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a mashup. There's a photo of all of us in Russia. There's a photo of my mom, Debbie, who is the best. You got moms on the boot. Moms on the boot, yeah. And a few other things. She didn't even know it was coming out, which was great too. And, yeah, she never knows what's going on. So that's a pro model happy. boot with ride. Pro model boot with ride. You that get that the, like that's Stanley the fuse. Smith colorway. That's gone. the fuse, and uh, usually you're like paid to endorse products, you know. But yes. that is by far the best boot I've ever ridden. Uh, I've ridden and that I, boot. Yeah, it's good, and it I'm not dope. just saying that. I, that's what the boot I will ride until I'm done snowboarding is. Until so your feet fall off. Yep, and I got the until the brand is a bigger thank contract. You <laughs> <laughs> until thank someone you, can thank pay me more. <laughs> thank I you. am open to to, <laughs> to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so keep going, keep going. Uh, yeah, North Face, mm-hmm. Cobra Dogs. Kids not wearing cotton. Ow. Cotton? I I still I cotton still run kills. Cotton. But yeah, I'm I'm from Mount Bachelor, as I've said. Have you been there? Yes. Have you been there in the winter? A lot of exposure <laughs> going on. Yeah. yeah. You you got to lay yeah, it, it up. It's, it needs that North Face. It's micro-pop. so nice. It's so nice to see my like my friends get older and start wearing like thermals and like. Nice blend. You've been wearing them your whole life. And whatever, huh? yeah. And like not cotton socks. You're like, dude. You got some micro puffs in the closet? I got micro macro. I got the <laughs> Nupsy. The Nupsy is the wow. best jacket. I don't even know what these ever. terms are, but I'm going to check them out. <laughs> yeah. The, that's a big puff. The Nupsy like hustle? The, big, the Nupsy. <laughs> Nupsy. <laughs> that's the big, like, you know, like the big North Face puffy coat you oh, see? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best one ever. Damn, I didn't know they named that the Nupsy Hustle. What about so setups? You, you, uh, are you quiver guy? How do you set up your board? Do you detune? You Luif right out of the plastic? Or are you... 28-inch stance? Yeah, no, I, 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 I detune. I have that. Maybe I can't even call it the Luif when I have a file in there. Yeah. Or maybe Thomas will detune when yeah. he gets older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe Thomas will be a detuner. He's like, Dad, you catch your edge all the time. <laughs> There's that, like... 
two, <laughs> the 270 uh, <laughs> that he does in Japan, like mm-hmm. the, the hard way, which you can't call it that. It's like um, switch front side alley, you, whatever. The French Canadians are so. Oh, God. Yeah, I Let's know. Let's not right? go down Very this the DB. What is the verb? And uh, <laughs> what is the verb? <laughs> I'm just beating that one to death. Sorry. I, I love like you, Frank. One. But uh, he does that and he catches, and you're like, yeah, you have sharp edges. That's what happens. <laughs> Yeah, dummy, you didn't detune your board. Like I have no, I am my pride will be in the way of the detune. <laughs> <laughs> I will never. I saw I will a video. Never put pairs in of my Thomas, salad. I go, I go dull, but this is I got angles. I think I do nine and nine. I got angles for the for the jibbies and for like the park stuff. Nine and minus nine. Or no, yeah, that's actually it's like nine and three actually nine and, and negative three. Negative three. And for um for the mountain, I'll ride like the the. The ride berserker, the Blavelt board. I'll ride that in the one sixty three. Um, that's the one sixty three wide or the one sixty two. Either one of those, and I'll completely change my stance. I'm gonna go posi posi, and I'm gonna go a little bit wider. And I have like the two different things. I can't run the one quiver quiver killer. I got mm. the the jibbies and, and then the the righties. Looks like you just move forward, lean all the way up too, huh? You no, I I got I got two. Oh, you do. I got two. Yeah, forward lean is dope. Explain why. Because your knees bend. Obviously, we talked about Bob. He doesn't do it. <laughs> Bob Blum. So yeah. we, we should hook Bob up with some aggressive forward <laughs> lean. We just got to put that thing <laughs> on there. Helps yeah. Him. Put him in some ski boots, right? <laughs> Love that. But also, if you, you got to be mindful that if, if you're going to front board like a big ass kink and your forward lean's cranked all the way down, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're catching heel. Yeah. So you got to kind of find it. I catch heel every time I go backwards through a kink. That's not true. You cab two to kink and you're. I, like, went, I caught heel. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, you you got to catch heel. Yeah, okay. That if is. you're someone that doesn't mess with the metal, you might as well explore forward lean. You're going to appreciate it. I think just as like a snow. Play around with it. I think that, like, ripping them off right away because you've seen other people do yeah. it. A mountain like Bachelor, dude, it's all about getting around, moving fast, and, and side hilling it, right? I, I imagine. Yeah, it's just a bunch of cool terrain because it's so yeah. windy. You need that forward lean to be able to do that. Yeah, trying to, are these the, are those the... Are you snapping you a shot? I've never done it. I've just heard about it. You're doing it. an exit squeeze salt. It, squeeze it, and then fucking hand it to me. And then pass Wait, it to I me. I hand it to you. So I just well, you know, you sniff it. I want to do one, too. Sniff and pass. Wait, so... Pop, pop, pass. Just squeeze it. Just pinch it. You give it a pinch. A little and then mini It'll turn red. Pinch it. Now go, Now give it a big whiff. Just... Oh, he went <laughs> right in there. <laughs> you said right big whiff. You said ah, big whiff. That was too much. I like burns. Big whiff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went big. Big oh. whiff. Right. I like... Woo! It. Those are... Uh, it, third, third is it nice. supposed to burn? You're, you're not well, supposed to hit well, skin. Well, you went huh? a little too close. Yeah, yeah. you went too close. It, it burns it even no matter what. too close to really. the sun on that oh one. Oh, my, my God. Friend. You pulled a Zeb, pal. If why, you why didn't you guys have me do that at the beginning? That I'm feeling much better now. Yeah. Well, we can go another two hours. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Three, maybe. Who, you fuck it. Fuck it. Okay, uh, what's next for Smitty? Well, I'm going back to Portland after this to go work on Cobra Dogs, finish out our little bit in... Portland, and we're going to close up the doors for the winter in Portland, and we're going to be trying to get one in Salt Lake. So if you're in Salt Lake, as this comes out, hopefully we're working on something to get uh, you guys, uh, Cobra Dogs, out here, um, be around, be around everywhere from, like, Milo to Brighton, Woodward, whatever else. So bomb like, hole. Yeah, we'd like to get you to park hole. up at the yeah. office for <clears> maybe we would some love sort of that. event, you know? Hammer yeah. some dogs. Hammer some dogs, Put play four or some five hoop, dogs shoot down. some hoop. We got yeah. a basketball hoop. We could bring the bungee out, maybe some stepping <laughs> salts. Bungee back. <laughs> we could have a whole event. Hey, hey, I've been, been thinking about this whole thing. Uh, sorry to interrupt your thing, but no, street no. street snowboarder combine, right? So you have a no, so in a combine, what it is is they they figure out you know the next athlete. Usually, it's a college kid that's about to go into the pros. Like who's who's the best statistically? Who's about to get drafted? Right. So they'll do like a forty yard dash. They have like a high jump. They like run routes. It's this whole thing. I think we should do a street snowboarder combine where you have like a bungee pull for one. Um, <laughs> no, that would be one. Okay, <laughs> next one, you sit around. You have like a, a dummy wearing a bunch of gear, and then you like basically just talk shit on it. And like whoever talks <laughs> shit on it the best gets awarded the most. What points. about a uh, uh, move a pile of snow <laughs> yeah, with a shovel? Exactly. Then you that go to, one you, is you, good. You go to the, the hockey rink. I know I would move more snow you, than you, any of you, you. you. That's we all know that's. A lie. So you take the hockey rink, so you fill up a trash can, and then, like, boom, that's one thing. So it's kind of like a series of, of things street snowboarders do. Um, maybe you hang well, around. You like, you, like, walk out to a spot, and then you ask if you 
you like stay in the car, you roll down the window and you ask how it is. <laughs> the best of that, the, the Daryl. Do you have or to, then you uh, get out of the spot, you get out and you like kind of walk around the spot mm-hmm. and you just kind of like look at it and talk about it for a while and then go and then come back. Maybe you, you run full speed and just dive into a set of stairs and see how you roll down them. Mm, that could be, yeah. I think that's for the, the younger yeah. crowd. Younger guys. Yeah, yeah. This is more of a seasoned vet move. Seasoned vet. Maybe move, like right. another scenario could be we get like an old car that's like broken down, like park it in the lot. As Andy well as Wright just stays and you, in it and you sit in it and you fill it with like trash <laughs> oh my. and then like oh. and you basically like you have three people and you come in and then like how's your banter stack up yeah you know banter awareness well yeah there is always that on the trip right mm-hmm. it's like who can get the the best inside joke going in the shortest amount of time yeah exactly okay. all right yep. there's a lot a lot we could do with this we'll, a lot we'll of develop things. it we'll yeah keep developing potentially it. Those, those poor backcountry <laughs> guys right we've been talking about oh no those. when they build their jumps man they talk Great you banter goes on. Banter? Yeah, you some of the best conversations happen on a on a kicker build. That's a good point. I no. think I, you got like six to you, ten hours, depending how many mm-hmm. days, how the big the build is. You know, I mean, really, all aspects have banter. The crunchy, uh, if you go splitboard on the on the skin track, your the banter's top notch. <sighs> Yeah, I, I can't really speak as I go up personally, but I'm working on. Griffin's it. in the front having a great time. There's just a few people trailing. <laughs> I'm three miles back, <laughs> just talking to myself. He's like, "With the, he's like, I'm thinking about doing a new avocado toast." And you're like, <laughs> "Yes, <laughs> good." Has anybody got any flaxseed I can borrow? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you got any thank yous before we wrap this thing up and get out of here? Uh, thank you guys for having me. Um, Glad to have you. Thanks to my sponsors, um, the North Face Ride Snowboards, Howl Cobra Dogs. Thanks to Milo as well. Um, I want to thank the parents and, and the brother. Um, and then I want to thank just uh, everyone who made it to this point in the podcast that's still listening. Thank all of you guys. <laughs> you guys are cool. Use, use promo code thank you for 15% <laughs> off your next hot dog. Thank you, 15 <laughs> at Cobra right. Dogs. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys listening. And well, all the friends and everyone appreciate. who knows who they are. And, uh, and big thanks to everyone involved with uh, – just Colton, Tommy, Artem, uh, Chad, and Colton with good support as well. A lot of first names. Let's and Mark go. Wilson. Yeah. Thank Jim and Bob and Gary and <laughs> Phil and John and and Dale there's a and big Jim John from Olden over in the uh, West Side and the South Face and uh, let's go. <laughs> and and I'm gonna take my headphones off. <laughs> All, right. All right. This we, was super fun. Thanks for coming on, Doug. We appreciate you guys listening and tuning in each week, and uh, we'll see you next week. Over and out from the bomb hole. <laughs>